With so many meal kit services out there, it's hard to find the right one for you. Here's what sets Home Chef apart. Home Chef offers delicious meals anyone can cook. They'll recommend meals based on dietary preferences such as calorie conscious or vegetarian. They even offer microwave and oven ready options that save you time and effort in the kitchen. Your box arrives weekly with recipe cards and perfectly portioned ingredients. For a limited time only, go to homechef.com slash art19 for $90 off your first month. That's a value of 10 free meals at homechef.com slash art19. What's happening to Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? Let me ask you a question. This is for everybody out there, ladies and men, boys, girls, children, adults alike, whomever out there has a pen, get ready to answer this question, please. Do you, do you still like podcasts? Yes or no, circle one. Let me ask you that right now. I'll, I'll wait. Go ahead and circle a word. Go ahead and take your time, and then we'll tabulate the results a little bit later. Let me, let me ask you this now. There's a second question for this quiz. Uh, and again, it's for everybody out there. It's for uh, dogs and cats, for toucans and magpies. It's for rhinoceri and hippopotamuses. Is that a, is that a thing? Hippopotami? Maybe there you go. Hey, hippopotami. Uh, Catafam. Maybe maybe it's them. Who knows? Whoever has a pen can answer this question, please. Do you like me? Oh, there you go. Now there's a yes or a no. Circle one, please. I will tabulate the results of this at the end of this broadcast, and then I will never let you know what they were. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know what? I'm instituting a policy of, of gathering data, and I'm gathering the things that people have to say to me, uh, just like in a comedy club. You ever go to a comedy club and they give a comment card? Uh, let me tell you, those are never put to good use. Never, ever, never once as the guy who runs the club looked at them and said, I need to book this guy because several times, uh, and by several, I mean many, I went to clubs and people told me, and although I guess now that I look upon it, before I even bring this up, I could be lying or they could have been lying to me, quite frankly. Uh, they would say things like, oh my God, you were so hilarious. We totally wrote it on the comment card. I'm like, You're, well, thank you. God knows I can only hope Dr. Grin reads this and brings me back to Dr. Grin's. Uh, but Dr. Grin had no control behind the scenes. It was all John Yoder. John Yoder was in charge of everything. There there was no Dr. Grin. Uh, well, maybe there was a Dr. Grin, but he was a toothless doctor. And, and he was certainly out of practice. He wasn't doing any of that good stuff anymore. He was going ahead uh, and he was in the back. And he certainly wasn't reading the comment cards. And he wasn't listening to what his audience had to say because they fucking loved me, man. And they wrote it on all of their comment cards and, and it never it never worked in my favor. There was no booking for me. And I will tell you this. I know this works this way for a real reason. Wait a minute. Something's going on like my head. All right. My ears are all fucked up. And I don't know if it's a winter thing, but, you know, my ears are always fucked up. But uh, I'm getting an echo. Hold on. Like I'm trying to pop my ears because <laughs> there's uh, uh, my ears are in case there's candles in my ears. We know this. I have, I have a couple of Twix bars. I have a couple of fun size mounds in my ears right now. And, uh, and I got to pop my ears like I've been, if I'm on a flight to try to be able to hear things. And yet the only thing I need to hear is me. Now I can hear me because of my internal monologue. What, what if I did? <laughs> what if, hold on. What if my internal monologue was exactly what the fuck I was saying? Like no matter what I was saying, it went ahead and flashed in my head like words. That'd be fucking crazy. You know what? I'm not joking. I just made that happen. Every time I say something now, I can go ahead and see the word in my goddamn head. Dudes, I am... Uh a specimen? Was that a good word? I think I'm probably a specimen. I think I'm somebody that needs a checkup. I think I need a doctor to go to peer into my head with one of those cones. You ever see those cones that they have where they look in your ear? What the fuck are they looking for? There's nothing in my ear for you to check out. And besides, you couldn't see it anyway because it's covered with a dark cloud of horrifying goddamn candle wax. All right. Uh, so have you answered? 
Go ahead and pass your comment cards to the front. We will go ahead and put those in the green room. And the, I can assure you that later on, either between shows or at the end of the week, the comedians themselves will go through the cards and throw away any bad ones. So go ahead and fill them out in any way that you see fit. And please recognize the fact that the person who runs the club, either Dr. Grin or John Yoder uh, or, uh, or Tom Sobel or Burt Borth, who ran the Funny Bone I worked at forever, uh, if there are comment cards that come in and say bad things, they will never see them because the comedians themselves uh, divvy them up into, into three piles and they go through and they sort out the bad ones. Now, it doesn't always work like that because there are clubs that take this sort of thing very seriously. There are clubs where they have the waitresses gather the comment cards and lock them in a safe because they want to make sure that the the grubby and filthy comedians know it. Look, you don't want the talent to get their hands on what the general public thinks. That would only help them maybe uh, improve their act or change a little bit or see the things that people say or think about them. And also, you don't want them to see the good things that people say about them either, because then, oh, my God, they may ask for four dollars more a week. And, you know, comedy clubs can't have that. They've got to buy that top shelf booze to stock it for those special customers who are in the VIP section, because that's what you want to do is serve top shelf booze to VIPs in a comedy club when they should be paying attention and laughing and not going, I think this goose is gray. Fuck off. Listen to me. Tell jokes. I'm fucking hysterical. Quit rating booze with your fingers and tongues. Uh, do you rate it with your fingers? Does people do that? Do you stick your finger in a vodka and then suck it off? Like, uh, like as if it were a cake frosting. Like you ever see that when somebody runs their finger through a cake that's frosted or they jam it into a can of frosting, uh, or into a vat of frosting. Have you ever seen like a frosting in the size of a lake? What if you went to a lake, lake frosting? Oh my God. How great would that be? That's like something Homer Simpson dreamed. <laughs> like he's skipping through the woods. And he does a double gainer into a fucking into Lake Frosting and he tries to swim. But instead of swimming, he just eats all of that cherry goodness. Oh, you know why? That sounds good to me. The word cherry just sounds good. Isn't the, the word cherry is something you want to put in your mouth, whether it's a fruit or whatever the fuck else you filthy motherfuckers or go ahead and thinking of at this point. Uh, but you hear the word cherry. You want that in your mouth. I don't care if it's cherry candy or cherry soda or cherry juice or cherries themselves or whatever the fuck. Cherry frosting. God damn. I love the word cherry chocolate covered cherry. Isn't cherry just a great word? You know, it's funny in true romance. Uh, that's a movie. That's not the movie I'm talking about in uh, Jackie Brown. Of course, Robert Forster plays Max Cherry of Cherry Bail Bonds. And uh, and I love that name, Max Cherry. What a fantastic name. If you were. If you were a murderer, OK, let's say this. If you've killed seven people and, uh, and they catch you and you go to the clink and then you're like, oh, man, I got to get bailed the fuck out of this uh, this joint. And then you grab the phone book. You're absolutely going to hire Cherry Bail Bonds. Who are you going to hire? Smith Bail Bonds? Justice Bail Bonds? Fuck those people. Nobody gives a fuck about them. But Cherry Bail Bonds, that 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 gives you the idea that your your free time away from jail will at least be delicious. And you want to talk to that guy. You want to see the guy with the last name Cherry. There used to be a, a defensive player in the NFL named Duran Cherry. God damn, I love that name. Duran Cherry. What a fucking cool ass name. There's some cool ass names out there, man. You know what's not a cool name? Mike Schmidt. Bullshit. I go the other way. That's a really cool name. There's other names that suck, though. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what else is a great name? Dr. Grin. We can't argue about that, right? Dr. Grin is absolutely a fantastic name. I would hang out with Dr. Grin and Duran Cherry. That ought to be my fucking posse. Me, Dr. Grin and Duran Cherry just fucking getting it done. Who do I want to hang out with? Do I want to hang out with Duran Cherry? Former amazing defensive back in the NFL. I believe he was a Kansas City Chief. and uh, Or Max Cherry, bail bondsman who carries a gun. Although, let's be honest, Ron Cherry's in the NFL. He got a gun the second he signed his contract, right? Didn't that happen? NFL players, they sign a contract, they get a gun. You get you get a, like a, a team cap. Like when you commit to a school in college, they give you that weird team cap. And it's like, yay, I will now go to Florida State. But in the NFL, you sign your contract and they're like, hey, here's a gun. Don't shoot anybody you shouldn't shoot. Um, which, by the way, don't say that to anybody. Don't don't give anybody a gun if you don't expect them to shoot somebody. Can we go ahead and say that that's the true thing? Don't give a gun as a gift. Don't hand out a gun to anybody at Christmas and say what with some weird caveat like, hey, do me a favor. Don't shoot anybody you shouldn't shoot. Because I, if I got a gun, I'm shooting everybody. I'm. It's going to be Swiss cheese fucking city. There's holes in fucking things, stop signs, mailboxes, people. I don't give a fuck. You know, the only thing I will not shoot are animals. Uh, I will talk to the animal. Certainly I'm very Dr. Doolittle ish, but I will not talk. I will, you know what? I will talk. Here's what I will do. I will shoot people walking animals and then I will talk to the animals to make sure they don't snitch on me. Cause you know what? Snitches get goddamn animal stitches. You don't want that. I don't, I'll, I'll cut a Fox. I don't give a fuck. You hand me a gun. I shoot somebody. You give me a blade and I'll slice up a goddamn armadillo. I don't, I'll stab it right in there. If somebody, I don't know who's out walking their armadillo, but they might be. You never know. And then I come upon these motherfuckers and I gun down their owner and the armadillo's like, meep, meep. And I'm like, fuck you, meep, meep. You know, I'll cut you, man. 
Uh, I'll, I'll stab the fuck out of a fucking, uh, did I say a fox, a tally ho rascal, a raccoon, whatever the fuck. All right. Uh, why is there a fox on my brain? Fox cherry. Oh, now see, now there is a name. What if your name or cherry fox, dude, that's straight up. Debbie does Dallas fucking names, right? Barbie Benton. And then, and Bambi Wells and fucking Cherry Fox. Let me cast a goddamn remake of some 70s bullshit. And let's fucking get those three ladies in it. That's the new Charlie's Angels. Barbie Benton, Bambi Wells, and goddamn Cherry Fox. And that's exactly what it'll say on the poster just for the cadence. The cadence works. You can't argue with that. Barbie Benton, Bambi Wells, and goddamn Cherry Fox. Barbie Benton, Bambi Wells, and goddamn Cherry Fox. Barbie Benton, Bambi Wells, and goddamn Cherry Fox. You know what? That's the name of the fucking show. It might be early, but I don't care. Um... Well, it's early in the show. It's not early in a release date because, again, I don't I can't get my fucking life together. I don't know what the fuck it is. You don't want to hear me talk about it. Or maybe you do. Maybe that's why you tune in because you're like, hey, let's hear what mother more troubles Mike is having this goddamn week. Um, let's address this. There is a there's a certainly a uh, uh, an elephant in the room. Let's talk about this for just a second. It, it is uh, it is week one of year 13. <laughs> it is episode one of year 13 of this podcast. And that. Uh, that's astonishing. I'm not going to lie to you. And, and, you know, normally we would come in and we'd have all sorts of different things going on and bells and possibly even whistles. Uh, but that's not going to be the case this year because you know what? I finally, well, first of all, it's Christmas as you heard from the opening music. Uh, and as, uh, as a uh, tradition here at the 40 year old boy podcast, uh, December is, is filled to bursting with, uh, with all of these fantastic and unbelievable uh, Christmas songs, which you'll have in the beginning and at the end of the show again. Uh, and so I, I we go ahead and include those. But also, I will tell you in January going ahead that uh, we will have the same theme song as we had last year. Because I, I think, uh, you know, it took 12 years and I loved them all. You know, you can have 12 children. You can have a dirty dozen of children. Uh, but it was it was child number 12. It's the youngest who I'm taking and clutching to my bosom uh, because I loved the sirens. I loved the go. And I loved I'm the fucking talent. And so I, I talked to David, our friend. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to keep this theme song. Uh, and he was like, ah, good, because I wasn't going to fucking do one. <laughs> he didn't really do that. But I had talked to him and said, I, you know, it was basically removing some things from his plate that we hadn't even discussed whether or not it was on his goddamn plate. But uh, I just wanted to assure him that I was going to come sneaking up on him two days before the show and go, I need a theme song um, because he was able to do. We did. Um, you know, we've had new logos every year, too. And uh, and we did a little commiserating, a little back and forth and stuff. And, and as you can see. Uh, we're just going straight horn boy this time. There's no little Schmitty in the uh, in the logo this year. We're going straight horn boy uh, for for numerous reasons. Uh, I just I love the look of it, and it also is the match. Uh, it's the background. Uh, it matches the background of the Twitch channel, which we have, which I'm hoping to expand a little more this year. And let's see, we're going to get into that. We're going to talk about this year a little bit about the podcast and and integration and growth and and all of these things that uh, will not occur. Certainly, they won't occur. But uh, but why not shoot for the fucking moon in year one? And I'm sorry, in episode one of, of year 13, when you go ahead and if you're let's we can revisit things. Well, first of all, let's talk about this. Let's do this real fast. Let's talk about Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? I hope it was good. Uh, last week, you got me for about an hour and then you got a little uh, smells like Thursday. And I hope that helped you celebrate a little bit. Um, I know there are people out there and this sounds this is uh, all right. When I worked as a fucking comic, man, when I was on the road, I would hate doing birthday bullshit. Uh, those things where you're like, Hey everybody, uh, happy birthday or Hey, what's going on? It's good to see you, but I'm feeling close to a lot of you. And then there are things that I find out that happen and I'm like, Oh, I want to reach out to these fine people and say, Oh, well, this is a good thing or this is a bad thing or whatever the fuck. Um, so I'm hoping you all had a good Thanksgiving is my point. I had a good Thanksgiving. I hope everyone had a Thanksgiving. Some people wrote me on Thanksgiving and I wrote them back, which was nice. Uh, I know some of our friends did some baking. They had wild dinners. They had huge parties. Uh, that's a lie. I don't know anybody who had a huge gathering. I know everybody pretty much said, you know what? Fuck this. Uh, because the world has changed so much. They went ahead and followed the goddamn rules and, and they did what they could to keep themselves and others that they love healthy, which is nice. Um, I went to my brother's house. And it was me and my brother and my two nieces. And then Lenny has a friend named Sarah who came by for the show. The show. Yeah, we did a show at Thanksgiving. The two of us just talking over turkey. Um, it was nice. But also, I got I, I can't lie. It was uh, kind of awkward and strange. Um, you know me. And if you listened last week, you know that I have idealized ideas of what uh, stylized ideas, I suppose you'd say, or idealized visions of what Thanksgiving should be, uh, what I want it to be. And we did the best we could last week. We tried to do what we could to go ahead and make it work. And unfortunately, uh, it turned into uh, 
Well, I mean, it was fine. It was just, it was, uh, it was just a regular night. Certainly, I went to Lenny's house, and and the great thing is they had their Christmas tree up, and uh, and I got to visit with. Uh, but the, but here's the thing: one of my nieces was working at her day job because uh, she's in school and she works a job, and and I don't know why they were open on Thanksgiving. It was a coffee house, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like literally, he told me that was going to happen, and he's also like, hey man, we're not going to eat dinner until like nine nine o'clock, nine thirty, and I mean, <laughs> I didn't like that. I won't lie. I mean, I'm, I'm talking to you guys now. So I was just like, God damn it. But in my head, I was like, yeah, cool. I mean, that's what I said out loud, because what are you going to say? If he's like, hey, dinner's not till 930. I'm going to go, fuck that. No, man, she's got to work. And, and if you want it to be a family deal, you want to wait till all of the family members are there. And so you don't go ahead and jump the gun. Now, there are appetizers and stuff like that. Certainly. Here's what I made. Here's what I brought. Here's what I contributed to the party. I don't know if I mentioned this to you last week. Uh, I made some I made some uh, tagine cucumbers, chopped them up, sprinkled them with a spicy salt. I made some everything bagel cucumbers, chopped them up, tossed them with a savory salt. Uh, and then I made a uh, what else did I make to make a dip of some sort? I think I did. Oh, you know what? I brought a pie that a woman on Twitter gave me for free. Did I mention all this last week? I probably did. Uh, but I went ahead and got that pie. And then I went, I made it. Here's the thing. I, I become a sauce guy. As you know, I've tried to delve myself into the world of sauces. So uh, there's a sauce called Jezebel sauce. And I had heard about it mm, years ago, and then it popped back onto my radar screen this year, and I was going to make it fresh, and then I saw that on on Amazon they had a jar of it. I'm like, dude, I'll buy this uh, Jezebel sauce, and what you do is you mix it with uh, cream cheese, and you make a dip. And it's mainly like pineapple preserves and a little horseradish, a little black pepper. Uh, and a little red pepper. It's uh, it's you know whatever the fuck. And and I'm it's a southern delight, delicacy, whatever. So I grabbed that, and it's you mix it with 16 ounces of cream cheese. So I opened a package of cream cheese, mixed it all up, and it was kind of runny, like it and it looked gray, like it just didn't look fucking appealing or attractive at all. And I was like, what do I do with this? Because it also had like because it was pineapple it had like a yellow tinge to it, so it looked like just a a big bowl of like jaundice pus. And I'm like, oh man, this is not gonna be good. Um. But I didn't know how to salvage it. I didn't know how to fix it. I'm like, all right, well, fuck, chill it, throw it in the fridge. So I threw it in the fridge. And then I made a, uh, I made a special snack mix. Did I tell you about this? I think I might have. Uh, a, a snack mix. I found it online uh, because of our good friend Dinosaur Dracula, who you might, I, I, fuck, I told you all this last week. I swear to God I did. Whatever the fuck. I made a snack mix. Uh, but with, instead, of, it was like a Chex mix, but with Golden Grams instead of Chex. So I brought all that over to Lenny's house. And so we had those appetizers along with uh, Lenny had a, a, an onion dip that he made. And then there was like fucking celery with cream cheese in it and paprika. I opened up this fucking Jezebel dip over there. I brought some uh, special prime flip side crackers or whatever the fuck. And uh, and we all ate it and we all looked at one another. And I knew I fucking knew it. I was like, this is this is awful. Right. And they were all both like, well, you know, maybe. And I'm like, nah, dude, I look, I got no, I, I take no, I'm not sticking for this dip at all. This is not something I'm like championing. I I'm telling you it. I, it was an experiment and I've made it and it turns out that it's failed and I got no problem with that. And then I, I, uh, I realized and not even kidding in that moment, I tasted it. I didn't like it. They didn't like it. I'm like, fuck, this is gross. And they're like, well, maybe if we let it sit in the fridge and I'm like, dude, it's been in the fridge for like three hours at my house. And then it dawned on me because it was super sweet. It had no real taste to it. It just tasted sweet. There was no tang from the cream cheese. It was just fucking bad, man. Uh, and then I realized here's what happened. Um, you know, you're supposed to spick, you fix it with, uh, with 16 ounces of cream cheese and uh, you put the whole jar of, uh, of Jezebel sauce in there. You give it a little whip -aroo. Um, I used one package of cream cheese, which is, I Googled it. Uh, that's only eight ounces of cream cheese. So I had a full jar of their fake Jezebel sauce mixed with only half the amount of cream cheese. And that's why it was runny and fucking disgusting. It was so bad. And, uh, Lenny's like, well, do you want to try to salvage it when you get home? I'm like, dump it out. Like fucking throw it in the trash. Not interested. Uh, and what a fucking huge mistake. You know what I mean? And, and again, I was I was being so careful. You know what? I am such a timid fucking kitchen pussy. Like, I don't know what the fuck happened to me, man. Like, I'm normally a guy and I'm like, all right, throw in a few of these and a sprinkle of that. And look at a dash of this bullshit. Like, when I made a turkey at Jill's house once, dude, I went fucking off. Like, I opened, you know, the turkey was thawed. It was great. We, we did the right thing. I pulled it out. And here's what I did. I know what you do. You take your hands full of butter. And you put it under the skin of the turkey. So it's, I mean, it's horrible. It's like, it's just like you're doing an autopsy, but it's fine. It fucking works. And you put skin all over the outside, but there are uh, butter all over the outside on the skin, but then you reach under 
the skin and you basically put almost like two sticks of fucking butter in this in this turkey uh, under the skin all over the place strategically lumps try to rub it into the meat but also just lumps of it so it's going to fucking melt and make everything super fucking uh, uh moist and uh and then I was like, you know what I'm going to do? Fuck this. Let's cause normally they're like, yeah, a little salt, a little pepper, whatever, a little garlic powder, a little boom, boom. Fuck that. You know what I did? I cleaned out her spice cabinet. There was like some kind of Mexican salt. There was fucking, you know, all sorts of stuff like shaker. I, and I took it all, man, a little cumin, boom, boom, a little rosemary. How you doing? What's up? Oregano. How you're my friend. I just taught, I, I put everything like a spice rub all over this goddamn Turkey. And it was on just, and it wasn't even, there was no plan. I was seated the fucking pants, man. I was I was just like Captain fucking Gordon Ramsay. I was like, you know what, man? I'm going to make everything in this goddamn spice cabinet work for us. And I put it all over the goddamn turkey along with piles of butter. We made it. It came out. Oh, my fucking God. Was it amazing? It was so good. It just it was just like it was it was just uh, man. It was it was savory. It was it was fucking like completely buttery. It was so good. So, uh, so I have confidence in myself to do that kind of thing. And, and for some reason though, I will eventually I'll get super timid and be a total fucking kitchen pussy and be like, nah, well, it says to put in an eighth of a teaspoon and maybe I should just make sure I'll go ahead and to the grain. Fuck you, man. Live a goddamn little, you're not going to fucking die. If you put a little too much fucking coriander in there in there, let's fucking make it work. So I should have shook the shit out of everything. I should have fucking, you know, done this with the dip and moved this over here and made the uh, the crazy snack mix and whatever the fuck. I would have been a king. I would have been a goddamn king. But instead, I ruined it because I, I'm like, I need to put in 16 ounces. But then I put in 16 ounces. I don't even read the fucking label. I, in my brain, I'm like 16 ounces. That's like one package of cream cheese. Boom. in there, whip it up. Runny, yellow, pus, terrible, fucking awful. It like, you know what it looked like? Because I'm not, I'm not kidding. It was gray. And, and it looked like, cause there was black pepper in it. So it had this like black, like running through it. It looks like what you would have, what you would get if you stabbed the moon. Does that make any sense? Like, instead of like, you know, how sometimes you get like, people are like, Hey, look, there's oil. Like in the Beverly Hillbillies, what the fuck they shoot the ground and oil comes a bubbling up. Uh, it's a bubbling crude oil. That is uh, black gold, Texas tea. But if you're on the moon, like when, if you watch real closely on the video and when Neil Armstrong is like, stab and he plants the flag. The reason he hops away is because like fucking Jezebel dip just comes bubbling up to the surface. And it's like, oh, dude, this is what happens when you stab the moon, which, by the way, if that's not the name of a novel or an album, I'm going to be furious at somebody. How do you how do you not take that right now? If you're an artist of any sort, if you're if you're somebody talented, take that title and run with it. Now, credit me. You must dedicate your book or your album to me. I want it in the foreword. I want it to say dedicated to Mike Schmidt, the man who stabbed the moon. That's what I want. I demand that it say that whatever your fucking liner notes are. I don't give a fuck. But then this is this is what you get when you stab the moon. I want it to be dedicated to Mike Schmidt, the man who stabbed the moon. Because when you stab the moon, Jezebel sauce just comes bubbling up all over the fucking place. And Neil Armstrong knew he didn't want to get it on his fucking moon boots because it just looked fucking disgusting. And who knows? Also, you're in space. So that shit's like floating around. Like, it's not like bubbling up like, oh, look, a puddle. It's it comes lurking up like a goddamn fucking it's it's like the symbiote costume in Venom. And it's just but it's made out of horseradish and pineapple preserves. Who wants to be clad in that? Look, I would much rather be clad in I in a, in a symbiotic alien outfit that looked like a black venom dude than I would covered in Jezebel sauce. And then I go the other way for a Thanksgiving appetizer. I would much rather dip my crackers into the venom symbiote outfit than dip it into this fucking Jezebel sauce that I made because it truly looked like what you get when you stab the moon. It was fucking disgusting. And I was furious at myself. Uh, and I was very glad that my one niece was not there to see it because then I would be labeled as the uncle who can't make dips and nobody wants to be that. Uh, if you, if you get that, cause I should be the uncle who once made a badass Turkey with a bunch of crazy shit. That's who I should be in my family. But instead I would be the uncle who can't make dips. And I don't want that fucking label. That's not something I can live down. That's not something that's going to look good in a headstone. <laughs> what if it was, what if my nieces were in charge of what went on my headstone and they said the uncle who couldn't make dips. Oh, oh, oh man. As opposed to my other brothers or uncles who are whatever the fuck they are. But I'm the uncle who couldn't make dips. I couldn't live with that. I couldn't. It would be, it would be a, I would, I would make a deal with Satan himself to rise from the grave and perfect dips just so they had to chisel me a new headstone. And then I would let my soul rot in, in fucking hell for all eternity. And you know what you get, what, what your special punishment is in hell for all eternity. You got, you just got to eat that Jezebel sauce with that goddamn tablespoon. That's all you're eating, just sucking it down, warm room temperature, not even chilled. Oh, fucking gross. 
moon blood, bowl of goddamn moon blood. Nobody likes it. I would much rather eat a Venom symbiote costume. All right. So, uh, so I went to their, par- their house. Eh, it's not even a party. It was just their apartment. Uh, part, look, certainly parties, part of apartment, apartment. Uh, I went to a, their apartment and, uh, and we hung out and it was great. Uh, and by great, here's what I got to tell you. I have to be honest. It kind of sucked, but that's my fault. All right. It just, it just didn't feel again, you know, me I'm weird, but it was, it was like kind of warm out. So it, it didn't have that Thanksgiving vibe and there wasn't like enough people. It was just, you know, uh, my niece is, is a young girl and she doesn't want to hang out with her stupid uncle who can't make dips. And then there's Lenny and he's busy cooking. And this Sarah chick didn't get there till later in the night. So it's just me. So now I'm, I'm left to my own devices. We sit at the table. We talk, we wrap a little bit. We eat some appetizers. And, uh, <laughs> here's what I did. I will say this, 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 however, this, this was a, this made it Thanksgiving for me. This absolutely made it Thanksgiving for me. All right. I'm going to tell you this right now. Here's what I did. Uh, we had some dips, some appetite. I didn't get over there till like four. And then even worse, the fucking football game was canceled. That was the thing is Lenny's like, why don't you come over for the third game? I was like, what time you want me over? And he's like, well, dinner's not till nine. So why don't you come over around like five? And, uh, and I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. Cause again, you know me, I like, I like Thanksgiving. It starts at like one, it's a couple of early football games. Everything's great. Uh, but I'm a fucking weirdo, you know me. So I'm like, uh, yeah, but I'm just like five. Sure. Because, uh, Anna was working anyway, so it doesn't matter. So, uh, I got there and there was, and the football game was canceled because everybody's got the fucking hiv dude. What the fuck is going on? And, and I'll, I'll detour to talk about this just a little bit here. Um, the NFL is freaking out because all these people are getting the hiv, right? And then and the germ is running rampant. It's taking everybody out at the fucking knees. Um, but they're blaming the players. This is like the thing that sucks where the, the league is like, oh man, if only these quarterbacks hadn't gone to visit their friends, everybody would be fine. And I, I just think the league has to take a little bit of their own fucking blame here, right? Just the very fact that you're, play, it's like, it's like if you played football in a hurricane and two guys got struck dead by lightning and then a wind whipped the ball into the ocean and you were like, ah, oh, these stupid players, why didn't they throw the ball underneath that current of wind and avoid that lightning? Like, it's just such a dumb fucking thing to blame the players for getting sick during a fucking pandemic. Cause we all know masks help. We all know social distancing. We all know, we all know the rules. Wash your fucking hands. Yes. Wash your hands, but you're on the field playing football where everybody is running in another at high fucking speed with spit and snot and sweat flying all over the fucking place. Don't tell me one droplet doesn't get into a guy's helmet. It's good. It's fucking inevitable. But then they're like, well, these quarterbacks didn't wear masks at their film session and look what happened. Oh, we're finding them. And then they do. And then somehow they trick the fucking players into apologizing for it. I know I should have followed the rules if only only I had, then the entire pandemic would have ended. If only, if only Drew Locke of the Denver Broncos had worn a mask, this pandemic would have ended months ago. Get fucking bombed. The very fact that you're even trying to have an NFL season and you've had a, a, I would say an 85% successful NFL season, be fucking thankful. Make yourselves really partners in this. Like, Like the owners and the players should come together and go, Hey man, if somebody gets sick, that's fucking terrible, but nobody's getting fined. Don't fucking blame anybody. Now, look, there are people who act stupid. Like the New Orleans saints, I think had a party or something. I heard where they had like no masks. Like if you're just being a cunt and not wearing a mask, then yes, as we know, like in the entire world and look what they should do. If you're a football player and you just go, I'm not wearing a mask and whatever the fuck. And then people on your team get sick, then they should just cut your hamstrings. That's it. Done. Your NFL career is over. And now you got to limp a lot. That's who you should be. You should be fucking Sir limp a lot. If you fucking do some bullshit, like don't wear a mask and get people on your team sick, then be Sir limp a lot. And I know that sounds like, well, like, what about Drew Locke? Well, fuck yeah. Drew Locke, though, he didn't wear a mask to one film session. I'm not talking about what the New Orleans Saints uh, rode the fucking party train with a gap band with no fucking masks on. That was fucking terrible. Be sure to get your ticket. The virus, you don't want to miss it. Uh, and it's going to get right. Everybody got to get in line. Everybody. Everybody, all aboard. Grab your mask, everybody. All aboard. Mask, mask. All right. Uh, <laughs> so so I just, I think it's so foolish to be finding players. Now, look, do players have to use their noggins? Yes. I, who am I? Mr. Rogers? Maybe. But yes, please be smart about it. Don't have a crazy party. We're out with, like, with a bunch of friends. Because I guess the Raiders did that too. Uh, but But also, look, man. You're telling 25-year-old kids 
who who essentially are, are their job is legalized murder. Like literally it's like, hey, hit that guy as hard as you fucking can. And, and then you're telling them when they stop doing that, go, hey, do me a favor. Uh, put on a tuxedo and a bowler hat and be nice to everybody you meet with four masks on. Like, I don't know. It just seems like it's, it would be like going to Vietnam when those guys were fighting in the shit and just go, hey, guys, no swearing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, guys, here's the thing. We're, we're here and we're here to set fucking fire to villages and kill as many Vietnamese infants as we possibly can. But no smoking. You know, I mean, it, it just makes zero fucking sense. Now, look, am I comparing the horrors of the Vietnam War with the consistent slam bang action of the National Football League? Perhaps. Is that a bridge too far? Maybe. Is it a bridge that should be exploded by some of our boys in green as they try to go ahead and keep the Vietnamese on their other side of their fucking river? Yes. Uh, through the Bang Lo River. Uh, oh, the Bang Low. Remember the Battle of Bang Low? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Look, man, I watched that Ken Burns special, and I know all about the Battle of Bang Low. Uh, was that a, wait, was that a Ken Burns special? Or was that, or was that a, uh, a Johnny Dark special? Or was that a Peter North special? Uh, might have been the Dark Brothers. Johnny Dark's a comedian, not a porn producer. God damn it, why did my brain go there? Because I was thinking of the Dark Brothers who made, uh, they were they were like porno guys. Uh, all right. And the Mitchell brothers are also porno guys. Didn't they have a show on them on Showtime, the Mitchell brothers. And then they made a, and, and look, look, and that was back in the days when they made shows about porn guys back when that was what they could talk. They were like, yes, let's make some shows about some fucking porn guys. Now going forward, it's going to be like, I don't have TV. Okay. But, uh, but I somehow I'm, I'm able to find a way to watch TV wink. Like I watch football games and sports and UFC. So I have to watch commercials all the time now that I, I was not privy to before. And, uh, you know, there's actual because commercials suck, which we all know. But then TV shows, I, I guess they all have to reflect our because uh, I've said this on the show. Like I wind up talking about things that are going on in the world. And, and it, it's not necessarily what I want to talk about, but it's something you have to talk about because we're all going through it. It's a common denominator. And, and that's that's that. But. um, But when you see these TV shows, first of all, you got to stop making TV shows about nurses. You got you got to stop making TV shows about doctors. Is this. Is this the only it's literally it's hospitals and fucking cops and fire departments and and then fucking, I don't know, spies like, like, is that all people care about? I mean, I know the comedies are all fat UPS drivers and and, and fucking hipster coffee houses. I, I'm so trapped in the 90s. But uh, but then these fucking all I watch, they're like nurses. And of course, there's always these there's these pandemic storylines where everybody's wearing a mask. And, uh, and some people got to talk and then they talk about the pain. And I'm like, dude, it's, it, it's a very difficult line to walk because again, you guys were all trying to live our lives, but then you tune into me and then I went up talking about masks and shit. And you're like, Mike, man, nobody wants to listen to your podcast to talk about masks. And I'm like, well, I, you know, that's life. I'm living the same life you're living. So unfortunately I got to talk about the fucking masks, but then I see a commercial for nurses and, uh, and they're doing pandemic storylines. And I'm kind of like, man, what the fuck? Nobody tunes into nurses to see some story about the pandemic, but I guess it would be disingenuous to not talk about the pandemic, especially when it was goddamn nurses who were trying to stay alive. But also in this show, I guess the nurses are heroic, but then in real life, people who watch the nurses show and think they're heroic in real life, think nurses are dumb fucks and they laugh at them and they don't wear masks. I mean, I like, it's this, this weird disconnect everywhere. And I can't fucking figure it out. Like I said, with the NFL, we watch these NFL guys just bang the fuck out of themselves and hammer their heads into fucking each other. And they're like, ah, ha, ha, this is great. I can't wait till your brain spills directly out of your head. Like banana pudding. Uh, and then those same football players get COVID and people are like, oh, you pussy, it's a fucking flu sack up, and play the fucking game, man, whatever, stupid. Uh, and, and it just it just comes down to, uh, you want to talk about the duplicity of man, I, I, I don't think it's even duplicity, I think it's multiplicity. I think all of us are Michael Keaton on the inside, that's what I'm thinking right now. God, what I wouldn't give to be a Michael Keaton. Wouldn't that be great? Don't you think to yourself how great it would be to goddamn Michael Keaton? I would love it, I would love it so much. Sorry, I paused there to make it. Seem, I mean, I wanted to make it seem like I died on on camera. Uh, on camera, hi. I'm filming this for myself for later, so I can see how I talk. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I just, I, I watched the NFL and I watched the UFC. Like in the beginning, I was very, I was very much a a, a tongue clucker about all of this, where I was like, oh man. Well, I can't believe that the UFC is going to try to fight in a pandemic. Oh my God, it just, what's wrong with these people? And. uh you know, in, in reality, that's just fucking horseshit. You know, these people want to play. They have the wherewithal to be able to play. They're doing as much as they can to make it medically possible for these guys to play. And I have to be honest, I, I fucking, I, I, 
I swallow all of the football. I watch the UFC every weekend. Uh, I'm excited to have sports. I like to watch it. It makes me happy, you know, and, and it, it's a, it's fun. And I, I, at the same time, I guess I can still be angry or outraged at the way they handle themselves or comport themselves when they find players who are playing in the middle of a pandemic and really can't be held responsible for the fact that they got the germ, especially because we know that there are people who wear masks and do everything right. And they still get the fucking hiv. I mean, like what the fuck, man? So you can't hold these players fucking totally responsible or, or make them guilty. I, I, at least it doesn't seem like that. You should be able to do that to me. If you were, I understand it's employee and employer. I get it. But if you were true partners in the, in the league and wanting to make it look good, um, couldn't you be benevolent about it? Like if you were the owners, couldn't you just go like if, if like if some guy's acting the complete fool, all right, if you see some fucking guy, lampshade hat, no fucking mask, breathing in people's faces, hitting himself in the head with a shoe like a Tex Avery idiot, then yeah, fuck that guy, suspend him, whatever the fuck you got to do. But if it's some dude who didn't wear his mask to a fucking film meeting, now yes, that's stupid, but at the same time you, but also am I asking, here's the question, am I asking to forgive a quarterback for not wearing his mask to a meeting when I'm angry at people for going to the store without a mask. I don't know. And, and that's, that's why it's so fucking difficult here to, to, to parse the situation and see what's happening. And now I also want to talk about this before, before I get into every other goddamn thing. Oh, what I've left for. All right. I got to remember to talk about Thanksgiving. Hold on. I, I can't lose that train of thought. That's where we were at. But, um, I, I, uh, this is year this is episode 1 of year 13, all right? And as we know year 12 turned into just a clusterfuck. The the first couple months were were fucking fantastic because I we made a decision. And and always on episode 1 of a year, we try to look forward and see what we're going to do. And we think to ourselves, well, what could this be going forward? What could we make of this? What what can I accomplish in the next uh, 365 days, 52 weeks, whatever the fuck, however you want to measure it. And look, we also know it's always more than 365 days. We know it's more than 52 weeks because eventually I'll hit a fucking sandbar and we'll have to put up a rerun one week or I'll get sick or my fucking throat will have goddamn razor blades in it. Or, uh, or I I'll do a show that I won't deem worthy of being in the fucking rotation, but I'll put it out anyway. Cause I'm a fucking clown. Um, so, so I, I, it's going to be more than that, but last year we sat and we said it was going to be the year of, I will, we decided we were like, this is going to be the year of, I will. And by we, I mean, I, I know you guys weren't involved in a fucking decision. I tell you what it's going to be. And you all nod accordingly. Cause you're lovely people. Uh, but I decided it was going to be the year of, I will. Cause I, I stepped on a scale and I was like, holy fuck. I haven't been this heavy in fucking forever. And I was still lifting. I just wasn't doing cardio. I was eating like a fuckhead. I mean, it just, I had allowed myself to fucking spiral, you know, e- even though it wasn't even, it was, I was, I, this is a literal phrase. All right. And I, it's, it's certainly a phrase that people use as a saying or whatever the fuck, but I mean this literally, I was having my cake and eating it too. Uh, I, I was I was lifting weights and I was doing what I could and I was enjoying that paying a trainer going to see him, but I wasn't taking care of my diet. I wasn't taking care of my cardio. I was still I was putting on weight and muscle mass at the same time. So I just I looked like the tick. I mean, but not certainly not as defined. I was just like bulbous. It was fucking weird, right? But I was too heavy and I knew it. And I was like, you know what, man, you got to fucking get a grip on this. You're fucking 52 and and you, you can't spiral off like this. I. Cause I had done great things in the middle of the, t- of the, you know, of the 2010s. Uh, and I had, I had lost a ton of weight and felt great and looked good. And I was really excited. Uh, and then everything kind of went to hell <laughs> and I don't need to recap why or how, uh, and my brain took a beating cause my brain is always ready to take a beating. My brain, you know, they, they always have these football players and everybody giving their goddamn, uh, their brains to, uh, to science to get their CTE 
examined. And, and I wonder how many fucking concussions I've had in my goddamn life. And if that's had any sort of effect on me and it's not, it has it. It's bullshit. I know what it is. It's childhood bullshit. And I've never straightened out my goddamn life. And I understand this. And this is the thing that I always fucking face. And then I bring it to you guys. And I'm sure you're tired of me running it up the goddamn flagpole every year and going, Hey, time for a change. And then you're like, yeah, we're not saluting that fucking flag. Nobody's saluting the flag change. Cause we know in a goddamn year, you'll come back and go, guys, really? I wanted to change. And it didn't help. But shut the fuck up up. Uh, and yes, that's not being kind to myself. I understand that. Be kind to yourself. I will say this to you guys, be kind to yourselves. Whenever I speak to a friend or, or someone who's close to me and they tell me about something they're going through, uh, but then they tell me about something they've accomplished. They'll say something they accomplished and then they'll go, yeah, well, it's not really that big a deal, whatever. And I'll, I'll go, you need to stop, stop right there. Anything you do is a big deal. It's so funny. I'm so I'm, I'm the one to recognize everybody's achievements and accomplishments in the face of the adversity we have in front of us right now. But I will never do that for myself. It's ridiculous, foolish, and wrong, and yet that's how I've always been. But I truly mean this to all of you out there, anyone, anyone struggling with any sort of, uh, uh, you know, trying to find a job or you're, you're leaving your job or you don't like your job or you just get up and go to fucking work every day. You don't want to, but you do. Uh, if you've lost weight or you didn't want to lose weight or you have to lose weight and you haven't been able to lose weight, whatever, any, anything you have, any obstacle in front of you, any small thing that you think is small and that you've achieved any thing you haven't been able to achieve, but you're pursuing. Here's what I say. Be kind to yourself and, be, and, and give yourself the honor and the grace to either a forgive yourself for not accomplishing the things that you think you've wanted to accomplish or b be proud of the things that you were able to parse through, whether you think they're small achievements or not, because right now looking around, I will say this uh, again, I was born in 1967, so I lived the tail end of Vietnam, but it didn't affect me in the fucking least. I didn't have any family over there. I didn't have any older brothers, none of those motherfuckers. I didn't know anybody. It didn't touch me personally. Now I recognize the, the upheaval, whatever the fuck we went through as a country, that's fine. But for me right now, what we are going through, what we've gone through for the past year, this is, uh, probably the single most challenging circumstance we have faced as a nation, as a world since I've been alive. This is truly for me right now, a once in a lifetime event. I'm hoping it stays a once in a lifetime event. Although who the fuck knows what's coming out of the Arctic ice shelves as those get fucking chiseled away by heat and global warming and what fucking pathogen is going to get airborne and float into America and make us all shit our pants four times a goddamn day. I got no idea, but for what we're going through right now, this pandemic, this, uh, you know, the coronavirus, COVID-19, the HIV, the germ, the plague, whatever the fuck you want to call it, captain trips, whatever you've got to call it. We recognize it's real. We recognize it's killed now, I think, 270,000 Americans since March. And uh, and that's an astonishing number. And now it's just getting worse every day. Every day we're essentially having a 9-11, uh, except the planes are crashing into people's lungs. And it is fucked, man. I mean, I, I don't. I, and, and we are split as a nation. We see people who still claim it's a hoax. We still people we see people who still claim it's not that serious. Uh, we still see people who are willing to explain away the deaths by saying, oh, it's only the old or it's only the blacks or it's only the Chinese or the Vietnamese or whatever the fuck. Uh, and 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 I, I think that's just kind of a. Uh, a conditioning issue. Uh, a coping issue as well, where people are just trying to go, well, no, it, it's not me. It's, it's those people. It's them. It's always them. It's never me. But then you hear all these stories about people who do get sick and they go to the fucking <laughs> emergency room and then they, they yell at the nurses. They're like, I, this is how ho- it's a hoax. I don't have this. And then they go, we're going to put a tube in your fucking mouth, idiot. And they're just like, I, what, how dare you? <laughs> yeah. Suck ventilator cock. Because you know what? Maybe I shouldn't save your fucking life. Cause there's probably 10 other people out there who believe in this shit, who need me to save it but you got here fucking first. This circumstance is an unbelievably challenging one. It is something we, we, I will say we, and when I say we, it's the colloquial, 
the royal we as in citizens. I'm sure scientists, I'm sure fucking uh, CDC and epidemiologists, whoever the fuck else, these guys all saw it coming at some point. I, there was the speech Obama gave where he's like, we need to be ready for a worldwide pandemic. Fuck, Steven Soderbergh thought saw it coming and made Contagion, which is a brilliant fucking movie. So the possibility always existed, but you, me, and fucking Robert Lunchpail, like none of us thought it was going to fucking happen. We're all busy posting selfies and we're going to eat pizza and we're going to the movie theater and we're, we're going to the gym and having a good time. And we're not fucking dealing with it like, like it's, it's anything that the world is going to end in a day. Nobody thinks like that. And all of a sudden this comes along and it upsets the apple cart and then it gives fucking all the apples the virus and you can't eat them. And it just, it just changes everything. So please know that anything you've accomplished, whether, whether it was just getting up in the fucking morning and doing whatever work you thought you needed to accomplish, if you've powered through on some project, or if you just stayed alive, if you, if you, if you woke up and you showered, Hey, give yourself a fucking round of applause. And I know there'll be people who are like, you gotta, no, you gotta toughen up. You gotta sack up. You gotta be, you gotta pull up by your bootstraps. Fuck that, man. My bootstraps are covered in germs. I'm not touching those fucking things. Be kind to yourself and recognize that you are living in unbelievably challenging circumstances. And there will be people who fight me and there are people who write me and they say, well, you don't understand. And then the masks and oh, don't you know the masks get you sick? Everybody says the same fucking thing. And, and fine. You know what I mean? Like I said, if you want to believe that stuff, that's cool. You're going to die at some point or your grandma will or your aunt or somebody. And then you'll be like, oh, well, but you know what? Maybe she was just old or whatever the fight. Oh, no. And, and everybody who wants to can compartmentalize this. Anybody who wants to can avoid this. Anybody who wants to can pretend it's not happening or always move the goalposts so they don't ever have to recognize that we're in the middle of a ridiculously challenging circumstance. And, uh, and I think one of the reasons why anybody who doesn't wear a mask or all that, why they're so aggressive with you is because they know, they know that what they're doing is stupid and they know that what they're doing is wrong. And they know that what they're doing is putting other people in danger, but they're terrified. And if they acknowledge that this is for real, then they have to actually accept it as reality. And that will upset whatever the fuck they have in their brain as their perfect little world or whatever the fuck they have going on. So they're actually angry at you when you, when somebody doesn't wear a mask and they, like, I see these videos of people not wearing masks and they're yelling in banks or they're yelling at people with masks or they're making fun of them or they're laughing. And I'm like, you know what that all that person is doing is they're fucking, they're angry at you because you're reminding them that they're stupid. They're angry at you because you remind them that this is real and they can't just wish it away. And they can't just say, well, this is fake or a hoax or it'll go away with you wearing a mask. They recognize that what's happening is a, is a something that is serious and they can't ignore it. When you wear your mask, they can't ignore it. They can hide in their house. They can hang out with their stupid friends and drink a fucking pony keg in the backyard and laugh hilariously until Rick dies. And they're like, oh no, whatever the fuck. But those assholes are fine. They're doing their thing. And that's that. And yes, I know I'm going to get fucking letters from people all the time who are like, Hey, whatever, fuckhead, you don't understand. But Hey, yeah, I do understand. Okay. I'm not scolding you if you don't, cause I'm not telling you this. Here's the thing. I've, I've come a long way in, in the past fucking nine months. All right. Cause I, as I've said this on other shows before, I was very nanny state in a way where I was like, wear your fucking mask, wear your fucking mask. Jesus Christ. It's just the, it's the literally the least you can do. Wear a goddamn mask to keep other people safe, to keep my aunt safe or your grandma safe or old people. That's the thing. Don't quit saying, quit saying only old people die. Hey, I know old people. I don't want old people to fucking die. Who am I to decide that they've had a good enough run? Let's let them keep taking fucking breath as long as they're allowed to take fucking breath. You don't get to decide whether they fucking go to fucking to the ground or heaven or whatever the fuck you believe in. You don't have a hood and an ax. You're not the fucking executioner. Your hand's not on the guillotine, the guillotine fucking lever. So you don't get to decide that old people should die just because you want to be whatever the fuck. So quit try, trying to explain it and move the goalposts. But here's what I'm saying. I used to be wear a mask, wear a mask. You're stupid, whatever the fuck. And I will say this. Yes, I believe you should wear a mask. Yes, I believe if you don't wear a mask. You're just being a cunt. All you are doing now is trying to upset people or whatever the fuck you're doubling and tripling down on whatever. Because look, I recognize the numbers. I will agree with this. Like 99% of the people don't die. Yeah. 
And and I think the worst thing that ever fucking happened for this goddamn thing was the fact that Trump and any of these other fucking idiots didn't die because they all got it. And then they all, like I said, they all got to drink fucking they cracked up on a wombat skull, ate its brain and drink, drink three dead babies. And then they get out and fucking do a Samba, whatever the fuck. All of a sudden they're playing fucking YMCA and Trump is dancing in place because he took a fucking Z pack that with a capital fucking Z. How many shots is he getting in the goddamn ass? But they did everything they could to keep those fucking old people propped up and alive. And it worked. And so then everybody went, see, it's not that bad. And now more fucking people are dying because they can't afford to drink babies. You fucks. So like I said, you, you I, I know the numbers. 99% of the people don't die, but still 1% do. I'm not comfortable saying, well, it's okay if 1% of the population dies. There's 330 million people in this country. Jesus fucking Christ. You see, you're, you're willing to let 3 million people die so so we can see your lips? I got news for you. Your mouth, that's not, it's not that attractive. You do not have a great smile. I've, I've been with people with great fucking smiles and I loved looking at them and putting things in them. That was fucking awesome. But at the same fucking time, that's not willing. I'm not willing to let my fucking uncle Pudge die because you fuckheads want to smile at me. Fuck your dimples and fuck your goatee. Put it all away. God damn it. Let some people live. But like I said, I know the numbers. 99% of the people live. I'm not, I'm not even fighting you where it's like, cause I will say this. There's other people on the other side too, who are like, you're killing everybody. If you don't wear a mask, you're a mass murderer. You're a fucking super spreader. I don't believe that shit either. I, I think you're being in a fucking complicated jag off. And I think you're certainly acting against the best interests of the general population. But I also don't think you specifically are in, ch- in charge of killing fucking 80 people. Maybe you are. Maybe you're, you've got droplets or whatever the fuck. Again, I'm not a scientist. I'm a fucking comedian. But at the same time, like I said, I recognize the numbers that I there's, you know, there's 99% of people who survive. And why did they talk about that? Well, because is that news? Hey, uh, people still not dying. 100,000 people died. But there are people who didn't die. Nobody did that. You ever seen a report on a plane crash and like when the plane went down and they're like plane crash in Rhode Island, everybody in Rhode Island is safe except the people on the plane, but everybody in the city is fine. Yay. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of Rhode Island running this goddamn podcast, right? Why is that the state that I'm thinking of? There's I got 9-11. They didn't go jets scream and crash into the World Trade Center, which collapses to the ground. Great news. Everybody in Arkansas is safe. Nobody did that. Nobody fucking reported on 9-11 by telling you that everybody in fucking Indiana survived. That's not how it fucking works. So quit telling me, why don't they talk about the 99% of the people who ever don't fucking die? Because that's not what it's fucking about. It's never been about that. Quit moving goalposts, you fucking jagoffs. So, but I recognize those are the numbers, okay? So, so I can't, I don't want, and look, not even that I can't, I don't want to nanny state people. I don't want to point. I don't want to turn this fucking show into goddamn a Mobius strip of don't do this and don't do that. I'm not. It's it's fucking terrible. You know who I am then? I'm Marge Simpson in the Itchy and Scratchy cartoon. You guys shouldn't play so hard with that, pl- that flamethrower. And then they fucking hit her with a bat and she dies. I don't want to be that fucking guy. It's a comedy show. God damn it. At least it was about 40 minutes ago. Uh, but fuck me, man. You know, you, so here's the deal. Here's what I'm going to say to you. I, you don't want to wear a mask. Don't, I'm not even that guy preaching that shit. You're supposed to wear a fucking mask. You should wear a fucking mask. It would keep people safe if you wore a fucking mask, but here's what I'm going to say to you, man. You don't want to wear a, a mask. Don't. And, and I, I don't know. I hope you die. I mean, I like, I'm literally kind of rooting for it. Like I want there to be, you know, if there's going to be deaths, let it be the ass fucks. You know, like I saw, look, I, I'll just say this. All right. I saw a guy, there was a story. The New York times did a story. And they were, there was a whole bunch of like tweets where they were like, this person died and this person died. And it was all their personal stories. Okay. Now I only saw one. I I saw a tweet and it was a family. And I don't want to say, I don't want to say where they're at, but let's say uh, it was the husband of a family. He was a patriarch of a family. Uh, He was young. He was like 32. He had a wife. They have five kids. All right. And then uh, he gets the, the fucking hiv and he dies. Right. And, and she explains that he got sick. And then he went home and he tried uh, vitamin C and uh, he, and he drank tea, with, <laughs> he took aspirin. Like it, it, they, that, that's all it said in the story. It didn't say that he was a denier. It didn't say any of that shit, but he said he went to his house and he, and he tried home remedies. 
until like his oxygen intake was like 10% at the house. And then they went to the emergency room. And they're like, you got to go to a fucking hospital immediately. Uh, and then he dies like a week later, whatever the fuck. And again, he's 32. He's not in your well, only old, old, old people die. Well, this is a stupid guy. And I'm sorry that he's dead. And I wish his kids weren't so unhappy, but this dude dies. So then I have to admit, I go find uh, the wife's Facebook page. And then I find the husband's Facebook page. And then I scroll down. And, uh, and I see him talking about the Kung flu and, uh, I see him laughing about it. And someone says, this is racist. And he says, I don't give a rat's ass. And, uh, and then there's someone talking about how there's some malaria drug that you can take if you get the COVID. Now these are posts from like months ago. Okay. There was nothing recent on his page, but these were posts from months ago. And then there was someone who said, Hey, there's these malaria drugs. And he's like, Hey man, if that's what they gave us in the military, like, I don't want any fucking part of it. And they're like, well, but they said it, it's very, it's effective possibly in, in solving this. And he goes, Hey man, if, if it comes down to taking this, I'd rather die. Don't give me that shit ever again. And, uh, and I read this at 32, uh, uh, having received, uh, having gotten to his page via the, the, the write up in the New York times about what a tragedy it was that he died. And, and I had to look, I'm a, I'm an em- empathetic, compassionate person, but I had to think to myself, well, you were laughing about the Kung flu. You're saying you don't give a rat's ass if that's racist. And you think China forced it upon us. And, and you said, rather than take a certain treatment, you would rather die. And now you're dead at 32 and you've left your wife with five kids. And when you did get it, you went home and you drink orange juice. I, I can't feel bad for that fucking guy. I can feel bad for his kids. Uh, I, I guess I can feel bad. I can feel bad for his wife because of the circumstance she's been left with, but I, I don't know what her stance was because she even wrote on her page too where she's like i don't put any politics on my page if you want that go to matt's page and uh and that's where matt was on his page um so i feel bad for her that now she has to raise five kids and 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 whatever the fuck else but uh but but you you walked into the propeller man you invited this shit you wanted it to fucking happen and there's so many people out there who that's that's how they they've been functioning they're just like oh i don't care we'll see what happens well then that dude died and, and, uh, you know, I'm, he's going to be buried right next to me. The uncle who couldn't make dips, uh, the guy who didn't believe in the Kung flu, dig a hole for that motherfucker. He belongs right next to me. Combined dirt nap motherfucker. All I did was make fucking bad dip. Look at you. And I got 45 years out of my life or the, or the rest of my life. Well, not from now. Jesus Christ. When I lived in 98, that's not happening. That's not happening just because can you imagine me doing this show in 45 years? <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, episode one of your 58. Hey, hey what's happening? Mike Schmidt, 40 old boy podcast. Hey, oh, I just laugh like that for 11 minutes and then that'd be the end of the episode. Uh, and it wouldn't even be a podcast at that point. There'd be some chip in your brain that you would choose to have that had me come into it. Oh, 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 that's, that's what the whole show would be. Hey, what's happening? Oh, 40 old boy podcast, Mike Schmidt. Uh, that's not a bad show. I, I, I tune in for that show. If a 98 year old guy's giggling at my fucking cerebellum, why not put that chip in there? Bill Gates chip me the fuck up. Uh, my point is going forward for this year. Like, uh, like I don't, I don't want to talk about masks and shit. I don't want to talk about politics and shit. And I will eventually it'll come up. It's going to have to, because I don't have any other fucking life to talk about. I got to figure out a way to create life. I got to go. Cause then part of me is thinking this like January 1st, I need to just start living my life again. Go back to the gym, go out and do stuff. Uh, is this show better or worse? If I get the fucking hiv in, in this year and describe that to you, see, maybe that's the thing we do. Maybe we look at that. Maybe I go out and I walk a tightrope. And I, I fucking I, I go out and live my real life and I try to do what I can to go ahead and generate as much content as possible. And by doing so, I get the HIV and then I got to tell you about that. Would you pay for that? Would you want to hear me describe my, my inevitable demise as a fat guy with a tube in his throat? Oh, how, how horrible is that going to be? Uh, I can't get intubated and do this show. The 40 year old intubated boy. All right. Uh, I don't know what spun me the fuck off on that. I get, I guess because I was talking about, you know, uh, what, what the year looks like, the schematic for this year. I I'm hoping as we're all, all hoping, you know, we're a month away from 2021 and I, I hope it's different. Do I think it's going to be different? No, I don't. 
but I, I hope there's less bleeding about it. I, I hope there's more less less whining and 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 yelling about it. I would hope so. Um, you know, because we we lost really funny people to to fucking nonsense and and talking about politics and shit. And I and I do that in addition to talking about other stupid things. But I but I try to couch it in a way where it's still kind of entertaining or funny. And I never know if it is. I think it is. I think I'm funny, but who the fuck knows, man? I'm not looking for you guys to write me and go, no, we promise you're funny. No, it's not that fucking thing. I, I've told you before, I'm bored of the sound of my own voice yelling at people to wear a fucking mask. So I don't want to even turn it into that anymore. But but we might turn it into a show where I spike the football when people die for not wearing a mask. That might be pretty fun. Let's go that route. Let's do a fucking white 80 on this. Hey, I don't give a fuck if you wear a mask. Go ahead. Don't wear a mask. But then you know what? Die. Oh, my God. That'll be great. You do realize, here's the thing, you think the satisfaction I get out of you wearing a mask and behaving like a normal person is uh, anything close to the satisfaction I'll get to you not wearing a mere mask and acting like a dick and then dying? Absolutely not, buddy. I mean, schadenfreude is always much better than conformity, all right? So if I see you wearing a mask and being a good guy, that's cool. Awesome. I'm thrilled. But if I see you not wearing a mask and you talk a bunch of shit in a fucking uh, a, a vitamin store or whatever the fuck, you're one of those joints, you're out to buy pea protein and you're fucking roid raging in somebody's face because you're not wearing a mask and they want you to. And you're like, I'm in a vitamin store. If I want to take vitamin B12 and live, I will. And you're like some fucking like the Macho Man. Oh, yeah. Get vitamin B12. Yeah. Cream of the crop. Yeah. Take it. Uh, and then, and then I read about you dying and falling into a ditch somewhere and getting eaten by a fucking water buffalo or a yak. I don't know where you died. Where'd you die? New Mexico, Wyoming? I'm not sure. I don't know where you're going to find a water buffalo or a yak. Maybe you died at the zoo. Oh, that's even better. What if you were that? You were that cunt. You were the, uh, you snuck into a zoo. That's who you are. You're a fuckhead who's like, you know what? Oh yeah. I'm not going to wear a mask. Yeah. And you close the zoo. I'm going to climb the fence and look at the animals. Oh yeah. Dig it. And then you climb the fence to go look at the animals. And even the animals are like, what the fuck, man? Where's your mask? And then you're like, oh yeah. Water buffalo and yuck. Yeah. Dig it. Yeah, and then you fall dead in their pit and they bite the fuck out of you. How great would that be? See, that's a great story. That's what 2021 should be. Just fucking roided out weightlifters sneaking into zoos and getting eaten by yaks and water buffaloes. That would be perfect. And then here's the, oh, here's the best part. And then they find out he's got the HIV, right? Because they test his blood. But then the yaks and the water buffaloes, it turns out they don't get the HIV even after eating him. They eat him and they don't get the fucking germ. And then people are like, man, we should go ahead and kill all the yaks and water buffaloes and try to steal their blood. And then the yaks and water buffaloes are like, fuck that. Uh, but they gain the super roid power from eating the roid dude and they fight everybody off and they are the protectors. They're the yaks and water buffaloes who bust out of every goddamn zoo and they overrun the fucking upper fucking plains. Hey, Montana, get ready. Here come the yaks and the water buffaloes. And if you're a fucking muscle head who fucking thinks you don't need to wear a mask, I got news for you. Fucking Charlie the water buffalo is going to bite your balls off and spit them back in your fucking face. He's not even going to eat them. That's the best part. And you're also your fucking nads have all fucking shrunk from all the goddamn spikes you're taking, all the Duranaball and the fucking Winstrol and all that shit, Duraball, whatever the fuck. And, uh, and, they're just, and he's just biting off your tiny balls and he's spitting them back in your fucking face. And then you're going to bleed out on the great prairie. How great will that be? And then Ted Nugent will write a fucking song about you. <laughs> that's right the great white bleed out you know fucking die uh so my point is uh you want i i think you should wear a mask to protect people to protect yourself to be a good citizen let's all be citizens of the world but conversely if you don't think you should wear a mask and you think you can do whatever the fuck you want that's awesome i am going to root for you to die and when you do i will celebrate with a, I don't know, a harmonica. I was going to say a tambourine and a harmonica. I almost said a hambourine. And I got to be honest with you, I want to invent a hambourine. Now I want to I want to celebrate with a hambourine. What if there was like a fucking, you know, the tambourine has like the fucking symbols that got in the little holes. What if you blew through the holes and it made a noise and you still shook it? Oh, my God, dude, a hambourine. That's fucking beautiful. Uh, by the way, hambourine, uh, he was my favorite X-Men. Um, all right. So uh, have I made myself clear? I think I have. There will be occasions where we talk about masks and we talk about politics. Do I want to? No. Do I want to talk about quarantines? I don't, especially with what the fuck is going on in my goddamn fucking city right now. They, they, they put out some fucking announcement the other day where they were like, hey, nobody can do anything in California. You must stay home. 
And, uh, and it's like, what? And, and it was confusing because they were like, hey, you can go to the mall, but you can't go to the park. Like, I mean, and I'm not joking. These are real. I think at one point it said, hey, you got to stay in your house and you got to paint lamb's blood on your door and the virus will pass right over it. it won't even come after you. I, I, I don't I don't know what to think anymore, because also I recognize the rage you have at the stupidity of the people telling us to behave. OK. When the governor of California tells you to stay the fuck home and he's going to close the state down and then he goes and he has a maskless dinner at the French Laundry with about 80 other people not wearing masks. You think, why the fuck should I follow any of these fucking guidelines? When the mayor of Naperville, Illinois says, you know what, we're going to probably have to shut down the Riverwalk and a lot of other businesses and you guys are going to have to stay in. And then he gets on a plane to Florida, of all places, which is a fucking Petri dish at this point. And he has his uh, daughter's wedding and none of them wear masks and they post selfies on Instagram. When the, uh, the, the city councilwoman in Santa Monica, California, introduces a bill to close all outdoor dining in the city of uh, in the county of Los Angeles and they pass it. And then that night she goes and eats at an outdoor patio without a mask. You want nothing more than to laugh in the face of these hypocrites, maskless, so possibly droplets of your own COVID-infected spit would go down their gullets and they could suffer a painful fucking death along with their last meal of quail meat or whatever the fuck they choked out at a fancy joint. Because it drives you fucking crazy because I also recognize this. This is a fucking class war at this point. You know, I mentioned the politicians like Christie and all these other motherfuckers who got it and they survived. Do you know why they survived? Because they have the best fucking medical care you could possibly imagine. And the rest of us don't. And I'm including me and the rest of us. Yes, I am. I, I don't I don't have any medical care. I don't have any fucking insurance. Now, look, I'm 53 years old and the choices I've made in my life up to this point have ensured the fact that I do not have any health care. All right. I don't have a job where, where I wear a tie. I don't do anything functional for fucking society. So I don't have health care. Even with Obamacare, I don't have that because I'm, I'm, I'm behind on filing taxes. I get all this. I'm not pretending like I should have shit that I don't deserve or whatever the fuck. But that's the question. Who deserves this? I, I quote my good friend Clint Eastwood from Unforgiven. Deserves got nothing to do with it. Healthcare is a fucking inalienable right. People should fucking have it. It should be free. You can bitch all you want about socialism and socialized medicine. And I hear friends in Canada who tell me, well, you know, it's no picnic up here either because you got to wait a long time. All these. I get it. I get it. But you know what? I would much rather wait three hours in a doctor's office than have to spend $750 on a deductible because I cut my finger. You know, I, I, I mean, I'd rather I'd rather spend four hours and have to get a referral to go to a specialist in a doctor's office then have to spend $311 for an aspirin. It's a war. I mean, I don't, I don't know who else to say it. And I will tell you this, this is not something I want to explore. I don't want to pivot to this. I have friends who've pivoted to this. I have some friends who are, who are, their content is virtually all political at this point, and that's fine. Good for them. I hope it works out. And if that's what they want to do, that's fine. They used to do comedy shows. Now they don't. And I also think, and this is just, uh, I'll say this. Uh, I think maybe it's not a real uh, stretch to pivot from comedy to serious when everybody else in the fucking world is all of a sudden doing comedy. And I've talked about that on here, how, Everybody is locked and loaded with their punchline or their irony or their cute pun or whatever the fuck. Whenever you post anything, whether it's on on fucking Twitter or Facebook or social media, whatever the fuck, everybody leaps in with their hilarity. And as a comedian, when it's your job to be funny and then you look around and everybody is doing your job for free and and not squeezing you out of the marketplace, but certainly taking market share for free and, and doing what you do for not nearly uh, as long or as doing it as well as you do. I can see where the other would make sense where you'd go. Well, why the fuck am I going to compete? I've said this many times before. I've talked about it with podcasts, too, or I don't even know why I would sit down at a microphone sometimes. I'm like, I don't know why the fuck anybody wants to hear what I have to say. What the fuck? That just seems ridiculous, right? Why the fuck would you want to hear me? Uh, because there's so many other podcasts out there, which is just fucking stupid because you want to hear me because I'm fucking awesome, right? Right. And that's the thing I have to tell myself over and goddamn over. And so I understand when guys pivot to serious and I, I don't, I don't want 
to pivot to fucking serious. All right. I don't, I don't want to pivot to this is a class war and I, I speak for the poor. I'm, I'm not this idiot. I'm not fucking, you know, this isn't pirate radio. I'm not Christian Slater. I'm not here telling you about theme parks. I, you know, I'm fuck. I'm not, but I can recognize what's happening when I see it in front of my face. And when you talk about, well, there's going to be a civil war in this country between like the uh, supporters of uh, a fuck neck, orange fuck neck, and then the other supporters of whatever the fuck, uh, I have to tell you, you know, on the surface, it looks like that, but I I don't think it's going to take very long before people start to realize that this is, you know, like just today, I'm only going to, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to, uh, speaker of the house, Nancy Pelosi, who, who, as you, you all know, is, uh, just, just a fucking whiff. And uh, and she went ahead and she said today they're, that they're fine with a lower stimulus package coming out of the House because we have a new president and uh, and uh, who believes in science and a vaccine is on the way. Yes. Well, what about the uh, the nine months of burning wreckage that are strewn behind us? Do you want to do anything about that? You can say, well, going forward, we've got a new president and we've got a uh, a, a lovely vaccine coming to town and that's going to change everything. Right. And then you turn around and you look at the decimation of families who have six months of back rent to pay because you didn't help them. They weren't helped during a fucking pandemic. There are people behind on bills, behind on mortgages. There are people being evicted or kicked out. There are people being made homeless every fucking day. And it's because their jobs went away or their livelihood got destroyed because of decisions not made at the executive level. So now you think you're going to come along and go, well, you know what? It's a brand new day, new president, science, a vaccine. We, yes, but you still, it's like, all right, it's like if I broke my arm, and, and I didn't set it for eight months and it was, it fucking hurt like a bitch. And then finally my insurance qualified and I went in and I was like, Hey, you know, I gotta get my arm fixed. And they're like, well, no, 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 it's fine. Uh, going forward, you can just go ahead and use your other arm a lot more than this arm. Uh, we couldn't possibly fix the damage done in the past, but going forward, we'll just tell you that, uh, you know, if anything does happen to your arm further, we're not going to fix the original break, but we'll fix anything else that might happen. That's just, first of all, a torturous analogy. I don't know why the fuck I thought of that. But second of all, uh, th- that's, you're just telling people you're not even going to put a band aid on it. You know, no stimulus checks, no this, no that, whatever the fuck. And, and I, I just, so I don't have any faith in any of it. As I've told you for, you know, months and months. Uh, the main reason, uh, you know, I voted the way I did and I, why I, you, I made no secret about it was I just fucking hate him personally. I, I just hate him as a guy. I wanted him to, you know what I wanted? Quite frankly, I wanted him to do exactly what he's doing now. I wanted him to captain Queeg out with a couple of ball bearings in his fucking hand and lose his fucking mind every day, waking up in the morning, knowing he got his ass beat. Now I will say this, he's grifting and turning into $200 million, which is money. I couldn't even fucking dream of. You know what I watched last night? The big short. Jesus, fuck, I watched the big short and I just, I just, again, I teared up like fucking three different times in it, just watching people get their lives fucking destroyed and realizing there were just dudes who see that as numbers on a chart. There's just people who see that as a way for profit and loss and, and, and PL statements and, and they're okay with it. They just, you know, it's, I, I've said it on here many times before when people talk about, well, you should see my 401k. It's like, Hey man, I don't have one K. I, I don't know what you're talking about, a 401 fucking K here. Good for you. And I guess people who've looked out for their families and done the things that they should do and everything, we should go ahead and say, yes, that's good for you. But also there are people who need a hand up. You know, we, we can't all be fucking Billy Zane in Titanic. Some of us are fucking DiCaprio and we're half in the water and half out. And, and it turns out our chick isn't going to pull us up for some goddamn reason. So Zane hides under a blanket and sails off into the fucking distance. Whatever. For a guy who didn't want to talk about this shit, I sure have spent a lot of fucking time talking about it. I'm not happy about it, but that's what happened. Uh, you know, so the point is, it's it, it, having a mission statement going forward. I, I, as far as what to talk about, what not to talk about, it's it's fruitless because you know me. I'm gonna open my mouth. Whatever the fuck tumbles out of it is gonna tumble out. I am uninterested right now. I, like, I don't even want to talk about this administration. I, it bores the fuck out of me now. Whenever I see anybody engage with him now on social media or any of that shit, I'm just like, why are you talking to a ghost? Why are you arguing with a fucking ghost? At this point, any any dunking on or making fun of or pointing out the discrepancies or the fucking dishonesty of Trump is, is like yelling at a painting. 
there's nothing you're going to get from it. There's no satisfaction. It doesn't fucking matter. And it's dead art. It's gone. Wrap it up and put it in the fucking attic. And you'll never have to look at it again. You can choose not to look at it. And I'm at that crossroads with social media and everything. Like I, I can choose not to look. I've mentioned it's like a drug and I look all the time and I look on, on this and that and the other. And there's part of me that wants to just go, man, you've got books to read. You've got life to live. You can go out, you can do things. And that's, and that's, that's something I want to correct in year 13. That's something I really want to do. And, and look, we will tell you, we'll, well, fuck words are cheap. All right. I, I, they are my currency and I've dealt with them for fucking 12 years and going on 13 now. And, and I, I cannot tell you how many consonants and vowels have tumbled out of my mouth. I don't know. I, I, I can't tell you how many were false or true. I can't tell you how, how many good intentions were fucking torn asunder by the very fact that I am who I am and I haven't done any real work to change it to any real depth. You know, when I was with Shannon, I was doing good work. I thought I was doing a good thing, but I still, there were humps I couldn't get past. And it wasn't even that I couldn't get past them. I didn't even make the fucking effort. You know, I haven't seen her since the pandemic started. I haven't been to the gym since the pandemic started. So I haven't been working on, on my body or my fucking brain for nine months, nine months. And, and I can tell you the damage I have done to physically, I I don't even want to talk about spiritually, psychically, or mentally, but physically the damage I have done to myself is legendary. (laughs) Like, like they should write ballads about it. Like there should be like eight dudes with a coconut behind me going, I'm going the ballad of Sir Michael. He ate and ate and ate and ate the ballad of Sir Michael. He almost ate and ate and ate. And then he ate some more. The ballad of Sir Michael. He's laying on the floor. I mean, it, it is, it is atrocious. Like I, I'm, I have not worn a watch since March. I haven't worn jeans since March. I haven't worn anything with a button or a snap since March. And I got news for you. Everything that I own with a button or a snap, any pair of jeans I have in my dresser, if I tried to put them on now, they would come to life and laugh at me like a Sid and Marty Croft puppet. There, there is not a chance. Nope. No way. Just today, I have a, a space that leads into my kitchen. And there's a, it's a very small kitchen. It's an apartment. And on either side, as you walk in, there's a little, like a wooden ledge, like a countertop. And every day I used to just kind of climb on that. And I'd push myself up. Uh, I couldn't do any dips, but I could just, I would lift myself up and do like a five second count, whatever the fuck. Well, I haven't done that in forever, like since March. And today I don't know what possessed me to do it. Well, actually I do. I was killing time before recording this fucking thing as I put it off and put it fucking off. And I was walking into the kitchen to get more food that I could keep in my mouth. So it meant I didn't have to talk. And, uh, and I was like, oh, this is awesome. And I tried to push myself up and I couldn't do it because it used to be effortless. I used to be able to just kind of put my hands there and lift myself up and hold myself for a couple of seconds and then walk. But I couldn't, I did it the first time. And I, I, you know, I tried to do it effortlessly and it didn't work. Like, like I got off the ground and then immediately fell down. And I was like, I I even said out loud, I went, Oh fuck. Because my body felt weird. Like it was this thing where I, I couldn't even hold myself up with my own arms. And that used to be always, that was kind of my barometer. You know what I mean? I mean, look, I'm fat, but I was also super strong. Uh, super strong seems like a stretch, but I was a strong dude, man. I had muscles. So sure enough, I was like, well, fuck you. You got to do this. So I put my hands to either side and I pushed myself up. And, uh, and I last, and and then my arm started to shake. I lasted two seconds and my arm shook and I had to, I had to let go. And then I felt it in my chest and in my back. So I felt it in my fucking, my traps and in my pecs and in my arm. And I, I, I looked at out the window and I was like, Oh my fucking God, what have you done? What have you done? And I laugh about it. I laugh at myself like a fucking supervillain. Like, like when I go to sit up and it's that thing where I'm so 
the center of gravity is so centered in the in the middle of my body that like my shoulders move and then my legs do, but the the, the the fucking barrel from shoulders to waist won't go anywhere. And I'm like, I just laugh. I laugh because I lived like this before. You know, I was over 500 pounds. I lived like this before. And so I'm I'm terrified of the fact that I find it so easy to live like this again. Now, am I close to 500? Fuck no. But I'm a hell of a lot fucking closer to 500 than 300. I'm, I haven't stepped on a scale because, again, I, I don't want to see it. I, my goal, and here's, here's the thing. Uh, you know, last year, we, we, we called it the year of I will. And I, I stood on the scale on January 1st, and I weighed 366. And I was like, I'm going to lose. The, just I'm going to lose. I want to be under 300 by the end of the year. Well, by the end of fucking February, I was 306 or 304. I lost 62 pounds in two months because I started running three, four, five miles a day every day, seven days a week and lifting three of those days. And that's all it took that. And then eating differently. Like I, I, I stopped with candy. I stopped a lot. And look, you know, you've listened and every year we've done this. You can go back to Rocky with a blog. You can go back to all of and, and my issues with food have never gone away. They've been here. I might've managed them differently. I might've made them got out of my way a little bit, but they've always been here like a little pal on my shoulder like a great gazoo telling me it was okay to eat this or do that. It was okay to not do this and don't exercise and don't go anywhere. And I had to fight that every fucking day. But when I would get inspired and I decided I was ready to fucking do something, I would do it. And that's what happened at the beginning of 2020. And then the fucking pandemic came and I am not blaming the pandemic. I made the choice. Okay. The pandemic came, the germ swooped down upon us and it kept us inside. There's no doubt about that, but I chose, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't have to bury myself in a noodle coffin. I didn't have to drown myself in a, in a tub of chocolate. I didn't have to do those things, but I did because I found comfort in, in, in the things from my youth, chocolate bars, fish, frozen fish, macaroni and cheese, frozen ravioli, uh, the ease of use of being able to make them in addition to the nostalgia factor, it was more than enough to keep me tethered to it and make me decide that that was the way to go. It was it a mistake. Of course it was because now I can't even lift myself off the fucking ground. Uh, so, so (laughs) my, what I, what I say to you is what I say all the time. Look, words are cheap. I get it. I've said this in the past. I get it. You don't fully change who you are. You don't fully make any progress until you decide you're going to make that progress and you change your life. And I did those things for short periods of time. You know, I've, when eating was for the week, I, I, you know, that wasn't the right way to go about it, but I was lifting and then I started to eat normally. And then I, I felt fucking amazing and I looked really great. And, and that was fucking awesome. And then I, I backslid. Again, I have always backslid. It happens all the goddamn time. And this isn't woe is me. This isn't me going, well, you've got to feel bad for me. I mean, hey, look, man, this is my fucking fault. And uh, and I know then there are people who are like, well, you don't have to worry. It's uh, there are things in life that, you know, and I yes, I get that, too. I know. I know. And that's why I say words are cheap. Not your words. Your words of kindness and support are always appreciated. But my words where I say, well, I'm going to do this. Well, I'll tell you what, partner. Here's the plan. Watch me step up and nah, man, just fucking do it. But I'll still probably wind up talking to you about it because I, you know, I, (laughs) I, I, I can't believe the size of the wrecking ball I've taken to myself in the past nine months. I'm not joking. Like there are people who are like, Oh my God, I put on 10 pounds. And I'm like, really? I think I put on 10 pounds the first week. I don't think people understand, uh, just the effect you can have on yourself. If you decide everything should just go to hell. I'm lucky. I'm not a heroin addict. Cause I'd be dead by now. I'm lucky my drug of choice is food. I've chosen food as my destroyer. Anything else and and my liver would have already leaped out of my body in protest or my veins would have collapsed. As it is, I've already had my stomach turned to a shot glass once and now I have to do what I can to make sure I get it back down to that size again. I got to... 
I got to do it. Because I will tell you this, there were also moments this year where I just went, you know what, this is it. Like, this is it, man. You know, why don't, why don't you just go ahead? This is, mail it in. You, you've, you've got 20 years left, maybe. So, uh, so why not spend the next 20 years doing this? As I've talked before about eating food, I'd rather eat pussy than fucking candy. But I mean, I, you know, that's not available. So, so why not live the life of just like a guy who, who goes ahead and, and eats a ton of fucking candy and garbage. And, and I, I, it seemed appealing, boy. It really seemed appealing. There, there are times where it seemed super appealing and something I wanted to do. And I was like, cool. All right. Yeah, that's the plan. That's the move. Usually it felt like that right before I ordered some Chinese food or before I got a pizza in my goddamn house or whatever the fuck else. I don't mean to bore you with this once a year or twice a year or 40 times a fucking year. How many times can you hear a guy say, it's going to be different this time? I'm, you know what I am? It's like, it's like I'm an abusive husband in some fucking weird way where I keep going, you know what, honey, if you take me back, things are going to be different. I promise. I'm going to really try this time. But the difference is, you know, I'm making those promises to me, not you. I'm the one who keeps taking back the toxic partner myself. I'm in a toxic relationship with myself and I have been my entire life. I've made dribs and drabs at trying to improve it. I've done what I could to do the best I could. Uh, I've made real progress in the field of rage uh, I've made some progress in the in the area of self-loathing. I've done what I could to make as many improvements as I could. And I've also done what I could to fucking avoid making any improvements that I could. I've lived a life. I've made choices I shouldn't have made. I've been healthy for a while and then I wasn't. And all I can tell you, not that you asked, but I guess this is really me talking to me. All I can tell you is that efforts need to be made to change. And, and I told you earlier, you know what? You got to be as kind as you possibly can to yourself because you have to recognize you're in a once in a lifetime circumstance and you behaved the way you needed to behave to get through this unbelievably difficult situation. I don't think I can allow myself that grace because I'm self-aware enough to know that that's bullshit for me in that I was actively hurting myself to get through this situation and laughing loudly at it. Like I wish, I wish you could be here some nights at fucking one or two in the morning when I stand up and I'll catch myself in a mirror and I go, Jesus fucking Christ, man. And I just laugh and I'll go, what the fuck have you done? What have you done? And I had another one of those moments today as I tried to fucking lift myself up off the ground and I felt it in my pecs and in my fucking traps and every other goddamn muscle that I haven't activated in the last nine fucking months. So we head into year 13. Uh, still unsure of what's to come regarding masks and vaccines and, and the germ and the world and every other goddamn thing. We can all hope, you know, that's another thing I want to be. I want to be hopeful. I don't want to not like things. I don't want to be a pessimist. I don't want to look and go, oh, this is going to suck or that's going to suck or whatever. I, if there's anything like that, I should, I want to disassociate myself from it. So I don't spend energy thinking about how bad it's going to be. Uh, <laughs> the only problem is when you feel that way about yourself, and you realize that disassociating yourself from caring about yourself is only going to hasten your demise and make it get worse and worse. I'm still in a position where I can do something about it. I can't tell you, this will sound ridiculous after telling you the damage I've done and all the terrible things and whatever the fuck. I cannot tell you how lucky I am to still be ambulatory and able to seize this and grab the reins. Like I, as I've talked about this before, I felt this way when I was 37. I feel this way now. You know, I, I didn't, I don't have diabetes. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't have the high blood pressure. Like I don't have these horrible conditions. Now is my heart probably twice the size it should be? And is it covered in a candy shell? Probably, but I can get the reins on that. Like I'm still 
in a position where I can go walk. And once I lose enough weight, I can go from walking to running and I can lift and I can, I can change my diet and I can make these decisions and I can do this and I can live a better life physically. And then I told you, I, I, I wasn't going to even talk about physically or I'm sorry, sonically or psychically or, or, but, but I can make those decisions too. I can read a fucking book rather than fucking Twitter for four hours. I don't need to troll and trawl through the goddamn internet and read about the New Jersey nets <laughs> or the Vancouver Canucks. I mean, I, that's, it's awesome. I don't mind filling my head with that kind of stuff, but it's just a way to avoid doing the hard work I'm supposed to do. And also, in addition to reading books, I could go ahead and make Patreon videos. I could make YouTube videos. Uh, I'm already doing the Twitch streams, and those are great. And people who support those are fucking cool as hell. But I need to do the other as well. I need, and, and I've said this many times. Again, words are cheap. Talk is cheap. Letters are cheap. Promises are cheap. You can only be recognized for the things that you do, not for the things that you say you'll do. I'm not looking for any attaboys for the shit that I'm planning on doing. But at the same fucking time, if, if I don't tell myself that these things can be done, then I'll never recognize that I can improve, that I can make it work. And I have to make a fucking practice of telling myself every day that I can do this. Because I spent so fucking long telling myself I couldn't. On Thanksgiving, I went over to my brother's house. He was cooking. Sarah wasn't there. Lily was in her room. Anna was at work. And, uh, and I was by myself. And I, I sat in the living room. with the, and, you know He had all the lights off except the kitchen light where he was working. So I'm in kind of a, that kind of twilighty dark. The only light in the room is the Christmas tree lights. And I sat in his recliner and uh, <laughs> I said, hey, you know, he with no football game, he just had like uh, the Food Network on with Beat Bobby Flay. I said, hey, can I turn this to like a different cooking show? And I said, you have streaming stuff. He has Hulu. So I put on like the, the ultimate baking championship. And uh, and I, I leaned the recliner back. I put on my glasses so I could watch TV from distance. And I sat there in the glow of the Christmas lights with the smell of a turkey and stuffing and potatoes cooking. And you know what I did? I did what every self-respecting uncle should do in that moment. I went to sleep. It was, it was glorious. It was, it was seven o'clock PM food smell in the air. Uh, everybody else doing whatever they were doing. I'm just sitting there in the, in the glow of the Christmas lights, watching people make desserts on television. And I just, I went to sleep. I drifted off. I crashed. I, I didn't even think twice about it. It just happened. And this is before food. <laughs> I, I was full of smells and I went to sleep. And, and you know, you know what that brought back for me? You know what that triggered for me? A holiday, family, Christmas lights, smell of cooking. It was nostalgia. There's no doubt. It was nostalgia. And uh, and I had been in the position so many years before of being the kid, running around, playing, doing whatever, uh, while all the uncles sit upstairs and ate blue cheese and fell asleep. Uh, and now I had, I had done a 180, and now I'm the uncle sleeping in a recliner. But But more than nostalgia... That moment brought normalcy. I didn't have a mask on. I was with my family. We were going to eat together. We were going to celebrate a holiday. We were, we were all together in one place. Uh, I would even say it gave me the nostalgia for normalcy. In addition to not only experiencing some normalcy, it brought a wave of nostalgia for that normalcy. For a time when you didn't think twice about hopping in the car and going to the gym. For, for the, the nostalgia for the time when you could go to a movie theater and watch a movie and hang out and, and see your friends or, or sit across from somebody in a, in a nice restaurant or go to a park 
and and not have to avoid somebody because they didn't have a mask on and have to take a wide berth, not be able to make eye contact or say hello to somebody. It brought me a nostalgia for normalcy, for a world that I don't know if we'll ever see again the way we saw it 10 months ago. But man, that's all I want. I, I look, we all want improvements. Everybody wants everything to be better. Everything wants change. Uh, just change it back. Just, just deliver on that nostalgia of normalcy. So I can, I can walk out to my car and, and go somewhere and have something to eat and go to a movie and see a friend and go to the gym the next morning and laugh and talk about basketball and not have to talk about, well, what quarterback is out or how many games are going to be missed or they're moving this game from Thursday to Sunday and eventually to Wednesday because four guys got sick and some other guy. I, I don't, I just, we're all over it. Everybody's over it. We recognize our circumstance and we do the best we can in it, but we all root for normalcy. And so that's my wish. That's my hope. I can't make a prediction of what we're going to get going forward in year 13 of this podcast. We have been through triumph and tragedy together in 12 years. And this past year was probably the most trying of all of them because it was an event we never saw coming and we never thought we'd have to experience. But we did. Fuck, we are. We're doing what we can to get our way through it. We're serving ourselves with grace and being kind to ourselves as we do our best to navigate what is one of the most unexpected circumstances in our lives. And with a possible vaccine on the horizon, with the thought that maybe they can get people vaccinated by the summer, who knows? I don't know. I'm not fucking Bob Science. I can't tell you what's going to work. Fuck. Honestly, they could do the fucking vaccination thing. The first guy could be on national television. They stick him with it and he dies. <laughs> he just falls over dead. And everybody goes, what the fuck? See, that would, uh, that would certainly put a crimp in our normalcy. But this is my wish and this is my hope. I, I, I want year 13, 13 to be as, as uneventful as, as me waking up from a nap in a recliner with glasses on the end of my nose. I want year 13 to get back to us grab assing and talking about sports and either me driving people in Uber or making this my career or going on the road. I want to come see you. I want to do Ireland, which I didn't get to do. I want to go back to Canada, which I didn't get to do. I want to go back to Colorado, which I didn't get to do. I'd love to do live shows, which I didn't get to fucking do. I want, I want year 13 to be everything that year 12 never got to be. And I hope you'll come along with me and we can go ahead and find out together whether that'll be the case. Hey, come on. You're fucking 12 years deep already. You're going to fucking leave now. It's just getting good. You guys can get me at Mike at Mike Schmidt comedy.com. You guys can be my friend at facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy. You can follow me at twitter.com slash the 40 year old boy. I'm also at Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. At Mike four zero Y O B. That's M I K E four zero Y O B. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Find me there. I'm there. I'm on WhatsApp. <laughs> if you want to write me a note on there, if you're from a foreign land, who knows, man? I think I'm. Am I Mike Schmidt on there? Or Mike four zero Y O B. I don't fucking know. Find me. I'm there. Uh, so yeah, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I'm in all of these places. Uh, and and uh, and I'll find you. I promise. You find me, and I'll find you back. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank, uh, of course, Ryan Dirks is, is handled some web stuff uh, for us. And uh, of course, our friend Casey, who I hope is doing well and has handled YouTube for us. Our great friend, David Hernandez, David Max Hernandez has uh, done the artwork for the show for 
a very long time and the music, as you know, um, he's out there now. You can go to facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez and be his friend. And, uh, you know, he does a ton of artwork, especially this time of year. If you want some sort of painting done or some sort of image painted for you or for your family or for a friend, he's the guy facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez. Reach out. You can see all the artwork he has in his photo section and his artwork section. He's done a ton of stuff for me. Uh, he's done all the stuff for the West side 86 jokers, which is the fan club of this show. Uh, he also has his own closed group. This is dumb. That's dumb. You're dumb. I'm dumb. He's in the middle of retooling that, but it's going to relaunch soon from what I understand. And, uh, and also the man has a podcast. You should check out his podcast called the phlegm cat podcast available now in the iTunes store. Uh, very special episode this week with some, uh, very heartfelt family stories and songs and music and, and a tribute to a family member. I, I don't want to give it away, but you should go and listen. It's terrific. And he's an amazing guy and does great work on his podcast, the phlegm cat podcast. That's P H L E G M the phlegm cat podcast available in the Apple podcast space or wherever you find your finer podcasts. Go ahead and check out my boy. That's right. My boy, David Mex Hernandez, either facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, or you can get his podcast. As I've mentioned, uh, the phlegm cat podcast available where you find podcasts or you can go check out his website. If you're thinking you want to hire him to do some artwork, like I said, at facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez, you can see all the cool stuff he's done. But if you want to see different styles and stuff that he's done, you can go over to his website and check that out. Uh, check, check that out. Check that out. <laughs> check that out as well. Art by DMH.com. That's A R T B Y D M H. Dot com. Cancer isn't free. And the challenges don't end when treatment is finished. For cancer survivors in their 20s and 30s, the stacks of medical bills, empty savings accounts, and time away from work can be catastrophic. No one should have to choose between seeing their doctor or keeping the lights on, or make the decision to skip their medication because they need to feed their families. Yet these are the choices that too many young adult cancer survivors make every day, and COVID-19 has added an extra layer of financial stress and uncertainty. The SAM Fund and Expect Miracles Foundation have provided over $2.5 million in grants to young adults across the country but the need is greater than ever due to the pandemic. Please join us in supporting their efforts by making a donation to Expect Miracles Foundation's SAM Fund program today. To learn more or make a donation, visit thesamfund.org. That's thesamfund.org. Here comes Schmidt, he goes, here comes Schmidt, he goes at the Joe Business page. Bodies of hotties in their underpants, it's fun for every age. Box set downloads every episode, hey, let's get in a fight. Eat some yogurt and punch a wall, cause really close comes the night. But here comes Schmitty Claus, here comes Schmitty Claus at the Joe Business page. He sells a shirt with your dirt, dirt to help show off your rage. Tweaked audio's got sweet ass steamers, but a beautiful sight. Use their watch to decorate your crotch, cause Schmitty Claus comes the night. Here comes Schmitty Claus, here comes Schmitty Claus at Joe Business page. Here Schmitty rap on a song that makes Roe busting out of the cage. Get a print of podcast artwork, color all black and white. Mike Maxinelli will sign that thing, cause Schmitty Claus comes a night. Here comes Schmitty Claus, here comes Schmitty Claus, that's the Joe Business page. I bet you didn't know that the bees get out when Schmitty takes the stage. East on Earth will have to wait after Schmitty comes alive. Let's give thanks to the big angry, cause Schmitty Claus comes a night. Comes tonight. Hi, it's me, comedian Jen Kirkman. You may remember me from my appearances on Chelsea Lately or Drunk History or my two Netflix specials and 
Now, you know me for my podcast, No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast. Do you ever feel like listening to someone just go off about stupid things like gender reveal parties or bad customer service or just not wanting to get back out into life post-pandemic because then we got to deal with people again? Well, No Fun, the Jen Kirkman podcast is for you. I talk about what's going on in the world, in my life, and in my head every week, and it's everywhere you find podcasts. You know, it's funny in the face of the germ and all this other stuff that I'm talking about. I, uh, <laughs> I found out this week, my mom might've had it, but my mom is so tough. She scared the shit out of it. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I wound up talking to her and, uh, she couldn't talk on Thanksgiving and she's, she texted us. She's like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm wiped out. Like I can barely move. And I, you know, that terrified me. So I'm like, well, all right, well, what's going on? She's like, well, we'll talk in a couple days. And like, she wanted nothing. <laughs> she didn't want to talk. So, and again, like my mom, like I said, she's tough. So, uh, we didn't talk until yesterday, uh, Thursday. Uh, was it yesterday? Or was it, no, it might've been Friday. It might've been Wednesday. I talked to her. Uh, cause I texted her and she still wasn't ready to talk. So finally I get her uh, on the phone on Wednesday. And, uh, and first of all, my mom, uh, we'll talk about this right now. My mom is dealing with a torn meniscus in her knee. And, you know, she's 77. It wasn't anything that she did. She zigged when she should have zagged. She stood up and it popped, you know, it just tore. And uh, because she's still got the factory issue. And uh, (laughs) sometimes you got to repair that shit. But, you know, with everybody sick with COVID and stuff, she can't go in for a a surgery for torn meniscus. There's there's people who take precedence. So she said she's in a lot of pain, but she fights through it. And this sucks because my mom, you know, she was immobile for quite a while. I mean, she she was able to walk, but limp really heavily because her hips and her knees went, but then she had a hip replacement and it, it changed everything. She'd go up and down stairs. She loved it. But now with this knee thing again, she's having a hard time getting around after, you know, after getting out of the prison of immobility for a few years to have it come back. That's just a fucking heavy drag. So she's dealing with the knee. And then I talked to her and, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, I, I don't know if I mentioned it. This was, you know, about six weeks ago, uh, her cancer has come back. Now she's already beaten it three times. She's beaten pneumonia three times, uh, twice with the lung, once with the brain. She's she's you know smoked it, <laughs> but now it's back, and uh, it's it's not crazy yet. It it's it grew a little bit, so they knew it. But again, it's that thing where they're like, all right, come back in three months. And my mom's like, what the fuck? Why? Um, and we're starting to, we're trying to figure out what's going to happen, whatever. So she told me all this and I'm, so we're all dealing with this. And, uh, so I call her cause I don't know if it's that, that wiped her out, but then we finally talk Wednesday and she sounds fine. You know, there's no, I mean, there's no change or anything. And she describes to me that she was, uh, laid out for like, I think it was eight days. She's like, I could barely get out of bed. Like I couldn't even lift my head. I couldn't, I could barely pick the phone up to text or talk. She didn't want to eat. She had a fever. Uh, and I'm, I'm like, ma, this, this all sounds like you, you possibly had the COVID. I said, did you get a test? Nah, no, I, you know, I haven't done that yet. I go, ma, you're in the doctor all the fucking time. Have them give you a test. She's like, well, I don't think it's that easy. You know, you got to go to the drugstore. And I'm like, mom, tell your doctor you want a COVID test. So you got to do, especially if you're, you're, <laughs> you've had, you had cancer three times. I mean, you're probably a, a serious risk. Um, and pneumonia three times. You can't get some lung shit. So, uh, she, then she tells me, she's like, no, well, I'm okay now. You know, my, my fever, you know, I, I usually run cold. Like I usually run like 97.8. Uh, but I, I, uh, you know, she goes, I got, I got up to a hundred. My fever was a hundred and I'm, I'm never that high. And I'm like, Oh Jesus Christ. I said, did you get the, the no taste, no smell thing? And she said, yeah, you know, for, for like two days, like one night I had ice cream cause I couldn't eat anything else. Cause I just, you know, I just wanted to, I did, I just was so t- fucking sick of it. But I said, I'd have some ice cream and I ate it. And I was like, this tastes like shit. <laughs> I'm laughing. I'm like, what? She goes, well, it just had no taste. So I just thought I got like bad vanilla. Cause I was just vanilla bean, you know? And she goes, but I thought it was like one of those, a batch of bad vanilla. So it had no, I was just like, oh, this is terrible. So I, I couldn't even finish it. And I said, I, all right. So you couldn't taste it. She goes, not really. It just tasted cold. I'm like, oh fuck man. And so we talked and she says she's fine. And then, you know, we talked like fuck an hour and a half. And then at the end of it, I go, ma, look, I gotta do me a favor. You got to promise me something. She says, what? I said, ma, you got to get a test. Yeah. You know, well, I'll look into it. I go, no, no, you and Dan both have to get tested. I go, and I asked if he was sick and he was fine. She said he didn't catch anything. So then I, then I don't know if it's the fucking vid. I got no idea. 
But I said, Ma, you, you got to get a test. Just get a test. Because now you'll even, if you had it, now we'll see if you had the antibodies, whatever. You just got to, yeah, you know, I'm, I've been thinking about it. That's probably what I'll do, Michael. You know, I'll, I'll go ahead. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I love her. And, and I can only hope that she's, uh, you know, that she's fighting and still around to do so for the next fucking 20 years, 30 years. Uh, but she just, <laughs> she's just like, yeah, you know how it is. And then she tells me, uh, she had an aunt who unfortunately was like, you know, a baby, but her mom's sister died of the Spanish flu in, in 1919 or whatever the fuck it was. 1918. Uh, he, she died of that. And I'm like, Oh my God, man. All right. Well, I'll see you now. You got to know now it's coming back for revenge. You know, it wants a piece of you, man. So, so hopefully my mom gets a test and it turns out that she's fine. I, I have no idea if that will be the case. Uh, but I hope you're healthy too. I hope we're all healthy, right? Don't you wish we were all healthy? I wish we could be. Hey, do you know we got sponsors still in year 13? We do. That's right. Uh, the Paranoid Strain Podcast is our is our main sponsor, is our friendly sponsor, our loving sponsor. Our great friend, Fearful Jesuit, uh, who's running the show over there at Paranoid Strain. And uh, right now there's an episode up. It is a, uh, it's about Ronald Reagan. It's a little short because it is, again, as it is, it's number six in a multi-part show arc, uh, which, I, you know, they're going to continue explaining to you until you fucking get it, man. <laughs> he makes the announcement at the beginning of every episode. Uh, and then he dives into some Reagan, man. I didn't know that Reagan was fucking also conspiratorial. I had no fucking clue. Uh, I, I had no, this. And this also made me laugh because, again, we talked about Nixon and I was like, you know, the, Nixon made me think of me a little bit. Um. And we also hear that Reagan had a penchant for larger than life, self aggrandizing stories. Hmm. Who does? Well, why have I chosen unwisely? Should, should I have gone into, uh, into, into politics? Uh, also the, uh, the thing about Reagan was he was very whimsical. He stayed a boy basically his whole life. And, uh, he had an alcoholic father and I'm like, Jesus Christ, penchant for larger than life, self aggrandizing stories, a boy, his whole life alcoholic father jesus christ and and get this 40th president 40th president 40 year old boy a coincidence i think not ladies and gentlemen uh i guess i I found out that there's a lenin quote on the wall of the reagan library that's fake uh i I, here's a phrase that enters you'll hear this phrase and it's a phrase that i truly enjoyed uh mastermind rather than figurehead i enjoyed that phrase uh, you actually, and get this, there's a couple of clips of a young Reagan from way back when. Now he was an actor and you could find those clips anyway, but I guess I hadn't sought them out or searched them out with any real depth. And to hear Reagan on a radio broadcast speaking quickly, cause we're all used to the, well, I, we went to, you know, and, and the impressions you always, it's, it's burned into your brain, the impressions people did of him. And I also heard him live. I mean, I was in a room with the man and heard him give a speech, um, and uh, so, but to hear him give this speech and also I had, dude, I had no idea. Reagan, I guess, started out as like a liberal, but then it was something about JFK that triggered a man. He called JFK a commie, a Nazi and a Marxist all in this one sound clip. It was like fucking crazy. Not, not those words specifically, but he, he certainly hinted at it. Uh, you'll hear this phrase too, that I loved also an athlete of the imagination. That was that real. I really enjoyed that. And I, I will accept that as a description of myself as well. An athlete of the imagination. Uh, you hear about Iran Contra, you hear about, uh, uh, there you go again. You hear a clip of the debate and you hear that Jimmy Carter thought he had him nailed to the fucking wall and Reagan does one, one liner and everything goes to hell and, and, uh, and wins and he crushes him. So, and you just see, you see the unseriousness of us as a population unfolding in 1980 during this debate when there you go again, trumps any sort of fucking smarts from Jimmy Carter. Um, you hear a clip of the SNL sketch with Phil Hartman, which is one of the greatest sketches of all time where he plays Reagan as a doddering fool for photo ops. And then he closes the door and he fucking whips his, his, all of his crew into shape. And he makes these excuses and tells him what to fucking do. Tells Don Regan, he's got to resign. It's fucking awesome. So there's a clip of that. Uh, and this show, by the way, also closes with a run that will absolutely depress the hell out of you. I, I, I don't want to give it away, but you listen to it and you're just like, oh man, uh, it's just, you know, I, I, 
I don't see a way out. We'll see if one arrives, but that would be good. So there you go. So the Reagan episode is up now for the Paranoid Strain. Check it out now. And there's a bonus episode in your feed from the Paranoid Strain, uh, which you should listen to. Very short. It's only seven minutes, uh, but check it out. It's got uh, it's a news drop for fans of the Paranoid Strain, and you should go ahead and listen to that right now. Post haste. I'll wait. I will not wait. I will plod on. But it's the Paranoid Strain podcast available now in the iTunes uh, store, in the Apple podcast space, wherever your finer podcasts are found. Uh, and also you can send them a note. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. The Paranoid Strain at gmail.com. Go ahead and write a note to our friend Fearful Jesuit. Tell him how much you love the show. Leave a review in the iTunes store saying how much you love it. And, and, and mention both the Jesuit and the iTunes store that you heard it from me uh, because then I'll feel important about myself. Thank you. Go ahead and do that. I'd appreciate it very much. We're part of the Misfit Toys Co op. You guys do know that. I've told you this already, right? We're part of the Misfit Toys Co op. Podcasting Co op is what they call it. Well, I don't know if that's exactly what they call it. Well, yeah, they do. They call it the Misfit Toys po- Podcasting Co op, right? I-, I guess that's the official title. I don't want to be a guy who tries to go ahead and skirt around official titles. You know me. I'm a stickler for the rules. Uh, but I'm in that with the, the gang at Never Not Funny, which would be the lovely and talented uh, Jimmy Pardo. And, of course, Matt Belknap, Garen, and Elliot, and all the crew over there. Doug Loves Movies. That's our good friend Doug Benson. The Todd Glass Show, which this week has Eddie Pepitone, and it's fucking hysterical. You should go ahead and check that out. And, of course, No Fun with Jen Kirkman. And I think as I speak, Jen's doing her live Christmas show. So uh, that will actually be something you can check out later. Uh, if or Well, I mean, fuck, I'm talking now. It's not like you're going to listen to this in the moment. Who gives a fuck? Go look for No Fun with Jen Kirkman's live Christmas broadcast. I believe it's video and she's got guests and, and nog all sorts of cool ass stuff. So that's never not funny. Doug loves movies, the Todd glass show. And of course, no fun with Jen Kirkman. And let me watch your movie with you with our good friend, Jonah Ray. Jonah Ray uh, watches a movie with one of the people who milked it, make the movie, any movie you can think of or any movie that he books, uh, he will find a, a writer, a director, an actor, a producer, somebody else, uh, some grip. You might watch it with a grip. He may even watch it with a key grip. Let me watch your movie with you with Jonah Ray is in the available and where you can find all podcasts as are the other shows that I just mentioned. Go ahead and check them all out. They're part of the Misfit Toys co-op and I'm proud to be a part of it. I hope you are too. Are you a part of it? I don't know. Maybe you are. I have no idea. Uh, All right, man. Did you know that Cameo wants to have you hire me? It's the holiday season. Don't you want me to tell somebody to eat a Christmas cookie or to fucking get some mistletoe out? You want somebody to tell somebody to jingle your bells? I can do these things. If you want me to, say, to tell somebody to deck your halls with boughs of holly, I will fa la 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 la, your la la la. Just get me on a fucking cameo, baby. Hook me up. Pay me, and I will call your friends, your brother, your cousin, whomever you'd like, your boss. If you want me to tell your boss, you know what? Fuck this. I quit. Christmas season. I'm out. Not even at two weeks. That's my present to you. I walk out the goddamn door. I can do it. If you want me to tell your boss, you know what? Boss, you're the best boss I've ever had. I'd love to get a raise. Wouldn't that be great? I can do that too. If you want me to just say, hey, boss, happy Christmas, because apparently you're in England. I don't know. Merry Christmas, wherever the fuck. I will do that too. Hire me for cameo. I would certainly appreciate it. It would make me the happiest boy in the world. And then uh, everybody in the world can go ahead and say, hey, look at Mike making all that money on cameo, (laughs) telling people to fuck off or tell him that he loves them. That would be good too. Uh, Whatever you need me to do, folks. Seriously, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm doing. It's the Christmas season. I need fucking 15 bucks. Why wouldn't you think about me? Include me, damn it, in your plans. Uh, Bookcameo.com or the Cameo app on your phone. Go ahead and look me up and hire me and I will happily go ahead and jump on board and do the cool things you need me to do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you want to donate to this show, and that would be a great thing, because you know what? Uh, it is the season for giving, certainly. And also every month is the season for giving when you're an independent contractor who tries to create content and stay afloat, making that happen and making this his job. And thank you so much for supporting me. I appreciate it very much. Here's what you need to do, folks. First of all, you can go to the Mike Schmidt website, Mike Schmidt uh, In the upper right hand corner, you're going to find a little donate button, a little Schmitty little horn boy, you click on that and, uh, and then you can send me a, a, a monthly PayPal gift or B you can go ahead and just send me, uh, some sort of uh, one-time gift. That's nice of you to think of me. Thank you so much. That's at Mike Schmidt in the upper right hand corner. You'll see a little horn boy click on it and you can donate to me and I'd appreciate it very much. But also if you want to become a Patreon patron, that's right. I'm on Patreon. Why wouldn't you want to become a patron of this show? You can go ahead to patreon.com slash Mike four zero Y O B find me on there and uh, you can become a patron of this show going forward. Like I said, uh, year 13, I want to be better. We will try to do that. I will do the best I can. I promise it. Words are cheap. 
But if you become a patron, you'll never know I'm becoming better if you don't become a patron at Patreon. So why wouldn't you do that right now? Like our great friend, Robin Warren, who has stepped up and become a patron over there at Patreon. Thank you so much, Robin Warren. I'm glad you're thinking of me, helping me out, doing the best you can, doing the best I can. And that's very cool. Thank you so much for allowing me to do the best I possibly can. And also, how about our great friend, Hannah Frostman? That's right. Uh, from Jolie Out England, she is. And she is, uh, she was a, a initially a donor, but she has bumped her donation up fivefold. Oh my goodness. What? Yeah, that's true. She has gone ahead and stepped up and upped her donation fivefold. Thank you so much, Hannah Frostman, for thinking of me. Thinking of you, knowing me and knowing you. Uh-huh. There is nothing we can do knowing me and knowing Hannah. As she has gone up and boosted her donation fivefold. Thank you so much for thinking of me, Hannah. You're the best of the best. Uh, Robin Warren, Hannah Frostman, and you could be next on that list of people I talk about on the air and talk about how super cool they are. All you got to do is go ahead and become a patron at patreon.com slash Mike for zero Y O B. And I will welcome you into my wide open arms. God damn it. Uh, we've got channels. We've got places to go look at. We've got things you can see all over the goddamn place. I have youtube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Will there be things coming to that channel in the new year? Yes, there will. Can I tell you exactly when? No, I can't. I got to learn some stuff. And I think you all know how great I am at learning stuff, but I will tell you this. I got a list. I got plans. YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Go subscribe to it today. Not only does it have podcasts, but eventually it might even have me eating strange foods. Perhaps it'll just have me talking about a movie. Perhaps it'll just be a repository for, for me to do like an online video diary of sadness. Would you want that? Would you want me to be sad on the air? I could do that at YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Go ahead and uh, pencil me into your life. That seems odd. Use pen. Put me in pen. God damn it. I, it's been 13 years. Don't I deserve ink at this fucking point? YouTube.com slash the 40 year old boy. Become a subscriber, please. I'd appreciate it very much. And also twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. What? Yes. Twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. You can go ahead and find me there. I'm broadcasting four times a week at the least. It's usually Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. And, uh, and I'm playing games. I'm playing interactive puzzles with you. I'm doing, I just finished a game called Boogie Down Weird Legs, where I actually had to act out some dramatic scenes by myself, and I loved doing it. It was super fun. Uh, but it was a game called Rain Swept, not really called Boogie Down Weird Legs. But also we play Jackbox games. We have puzzles. We do the Yap Yap. I do, I'll do taste tests on there occasionally or I'll be trying weird chips or weird pickles this week, which I ate. Uh, it's crazy fun. You can go watch the embedded stuff at twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. And if you follow or subscribe to the channel, you'll always know when I'm live and on and broadcasting. Don't you want to be a part of that? Yes, you do. I know you do. Indeed you do. Don't you do my ears. He doozy doozy do. Uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. So uh, twitch.tv slash the 40 year old boy. I'm in there making broadcasts and I want you to be a part of it. So why not check me out? I think you should follow and subscribe to the channel and I will be very happy. You know, it's funny. I was talking earlier about uh, how, you know, in 12 years I do this show. I fire it out into the ether and uh, and we're we're a small but rabid community. Certainly there are, there are people who've been with me all 12 years. There are people who've only been here with uh, 12 minutes which seems weird and strange why they would only stick around for 12 minutes. But uh, why would you jump into a show an hour and 50 minutes into it and then listen to the last 12 minutes? I don't get it. But uh, that is the case. People, whether you're here for 12 years, 12 weeks, 12 days or 12 minutes, 12 episodes, whatever the fuck, uh, you're part of the community. And I appreciate it very much. And, uh, and we've got two members of the community who've had some uh, milestones this week. I guess we'd say, well, one of them had a milestone. The other is having some stuff uh, they're going through. So I want to go ahead and mention, and like, you know, it's funny. I mentioned earlier about going on the road and I hated talking about birthdays and things like that. And, uh, and the hell with that, man. Sometimes it, it merits mention. Uh, our great friend, Mary Beth down in Texas is having uh, an experience right now that she wishes she wasn't going through. Uh, certainly there's a, there's a health issue in her family. I sound like a psychic weirdo and I probably shouldn't even bring this up because she doesn't know I'm gonna, and I feel strange. Uh, but just please, I want to verbalize the fact that, uh, we all love Mary Beth and we're rooting for her and her family to come through this and stay strong and be uh, much better and all together on the other side. And I hope, uh, I hope 
uh, it, it's, it's nipped in the bud. Fuck. I can't see. Cause here's the thing. I don't want to talk about somebody's specific circumstance on the air. Let's just say Mary Beth's family right now has someone who, uh, is, uh, is going through a medical thing and I hope they're fine. I hope. And, and most of all, I hope Mary Beth, uh, is doing really well and I hope her family is staying strong and everybody's happy as they can be in this situation and they're staying healthy and, uh, and they're all rooting and everything turns out. Okay. How's that? Is that good? Was that a thing? I don't know. I see. I take it upon myself to say these things and about right with uh, 10 seconds into it. I'm like, why are you doing this? But uh, because I want her to know and I want you guys to know that I care. You care. Everybody cares. And in that vein, much, uh, much different news. Uh, listener crystal, who's a great friend of ours here on the show, not only here on the on the podcast, but also she's a regular on the Twitch channel. She comes into the Twitch streams and, uh, and I feel like I'm a part of this. She has been coming to the Twitch streams now for, I've been doing it two years. She's in there all the time. Well, uh, Crystal this year uh, became, uh, oh, how do I put this? With child. That's right. Crystal and her lovely husband, Zach, uh, are going to start a family. So every time she pops into the stream, I ask for an update. How she feels? Is she healthy? What's going on? How's the baby? Is it cooking? Uh, how many times will you name it after me? Will it just be Mike Michael or Michael Mike? I need to know these things. Like it's very important to me. So I know and I can make a notch on my belt because there's so many children out there named after me anyway. Uh, so I, I would always talk to her and she was always very you know forthcoming and, and just a very supportive and friendly and nice. And we love her and, and she and Zach, we love them both. And they're very, very uh, kind to me. And, and pay attention to me. So uh, just yesterday I was doing a stream and Crystal popped into the stream and she's like, I'm sorry, I'm late. I had a baby. What? You're goddamn right. Crystal has a son, Garrus James. The first name is Garrus, G-A-R-R-U-S. Uh, now I will tell you this. I normally wouldn't be sharing this because why the fuck am I talking about somebody else's kid on my goddamn show? But she shared it on Facebook. She shared the name even. She shared it in the stream. Uh, they're incredibly content and happy and the baby is healthy. He came early, uh, because he couldn't wait to get it for Christmas. Look, man, if you're this close to Christmas, get out in time for fucking Christmas to get those first gifts out of the way. I can't blame this Garris at all. Good thinking Garris, uh, Garris James. Uh, I, I won't say the last name, but, uh, but Garris James is the son of Crystal and Zach and, uh, much love to you and your new family. And we are, we are so happy that you are, uh, content and healthy and everybody's good. And Garris is a healthy baby boy. He only weighs like five pounds, but that's okay. Right. You don't have to weigh more than that when you're a kid. Uh, but he came out early and also it's Christmas, man. Feed the kid, give him a bunch of fucking noodles and shit. Make him some scalloped potatoes. Do babies like uh, a gratin Garris, a gratin. That's what I'm calling this fucking kid. Come on, Garris, a gratin choke down the potatoes and get big and strong. Like your dad, Zach. Uh, thank you so much for being people who have always supported me and been kind and nice, whether it's here or on Twitch. And I, and I wish happiness and health to you and Garris and Zach going forward. And now I'm going to stop talking about other people's families because that just seems like a ridiculous thing to do. And why am I going ahead and fucking dragging people into my goddamn nonsense? It doesn't make sense, right? I should just go ahead and talk about me, but I talked about me for almost two hours and then I'm like, Oh, you know what? Let's put somebody else on the goddamn spin wheel, right? Let's go ahead and talk about these people. Let's make sure that everybody knows about them. And it's a new year. It's year fucking 13. We're moving forward. I'm turning over a new leaf. You know what? I'm not going to talk about me the rest of the goddamn year. I got it all out of my system here in episode one. And from episode two through 52 and whatever fucking other episodes I can dream up in between the rest of this show for the rest of this year is about you brace yourselves folks, because you are going to get talked about and talked about over and over. Any and all of you are going to be the subject of every single show. The spotlight shines upon the audience because after 12 years, you have wrung every single drop of my fucking life out and I am bone fucking dry. So let's dive into the dark meat of your family. Let's get out the fucking cutlery and carve off a breast from you motherfuckers and talk about what you've got going on in your lives. Cause I'm sure that's what people want to hear at this point, because nobody wants to hear me once again, boohooing about the fact that I can't fit in fucking shoes, right? Nobody wants to hear me going, oh no, I can't snap these pants. Holy shit, my head is so fat, this hat exploded. Nobody wants to hear any of these things coming out of my mouth. Everybody wants to hear about you and your perfect lives. Um, and your perfect behold him, pum 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 The 40-year-old boy, pum 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 the finest gifts we sell, pa rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum, rum pa pum pum.
bum bum Come Joe they Vincent told me bum, 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 bum. Can it be A place to get to see Or here I be You gotta kill this dude A gangster Get a shrimp and food with a big bum on the front on the front of it. Joby hours bum 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 sometimes be every child must be put upon to use Mike's link to shop at Amazon Donate cash to his Patreon Support his rage phenomenon I pray you want to hear his rage So go to Mike's to call you to pay I'll try to help him clean the glory. We'll see the day when men of good will finally drive, finally drive the world. Job is dead. Can it be?